It is one of the most lopsided series in college football. Jackson State leads the all-time series against Mississippi Valley with 56 wins, 6 losses, and 2 ties. And the Tigers look to add to that total in today's homecoming game at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Hello again, everyone. This is Rob J. And welcome to the Blue Cross Blue Shield JSU pregame report. In just a moment, I'll be joined by former JSU quarterback and assistant coach Daryl Asbury, as well as JSU alums Sam Brown and Spencer McClinty, as we bring you the play-by-play -play story of today's game between 2-2 two two Jackson State and 0-4 and Mississippi Valley. Later in the show, JSU long snapper and mass communications graduate Ronza Anderson sits down with Tiger quarterback Jared Hayes in our player spotlight. But first, a conversation with Jackson State head football coach Tony Hughes. Jay State earned its first conference win of the year last week with a hard-fought 30-27 win over Arkansas Pine Bluff. Coach Hughes talked about that win and what he expects today from Mississippi. Mississippi Valley. Um, first, we'd like to say that uh, we're uh, very uh, excited about the uh, victory over Arkansas Pine Bluff 30 27. Uh, hats off to uh, a, a great job by our coaching staff, our football team, our players, uh, the fan base, everybody that was involved in the victory at Pine Bluff. Um, it was a hard fought victory. Uh, we knew it'd be a tough game. They came in one and four on their home turf. They have a new coach. They have a tremendous, tremendous level of excitement. Each and every team this time of year is improving each and every week. Uh, and that's the challenge of our team is that we also have to improve over our last uh, game. Uh, you only get 24 hours to celebrate a victory. And uh, now we're moving on to uh, get ready for a big homecoming game this weekend. Uh, against Mississippi Valley. Uh, really proud of Malik Hamner being selected as the uh, Southwestern Athletic Conference Special Teams Player of the Week uh, for two block field goals. In all, we blocked three. Uh, Charles Anderson, I believe, blocked the other field goal. And, um, and also, Christian Jackman played a big role. Uh, he averaged 45 yards a punt, and he was three for three on field goals. And uh, Tremendous uh, effort by him, and also uh, thanks to uh, Coach Derek McCall, who did a great job of, of play calling and uh, scoring three touchdowns on the day and uh, uh, having that consistency also. We played really good defense. So our victory was a, a complete team effort on each side of the ball, offense, defense, and in the kicking game. And that was the only way that we were going to come out of there with a the victory was to play team ball and to, that everybody uh, that was involved in the victory did their job. Whatever their job was, was it to be the snapper, the holder, the kicker, uh, defense to make a tackle, offense to catch a pass, to block, whatever their roles were, everybody had to play their role. And in order for us to continue to be successful moving forward, that's the type of football that we have to play moving forward because the competition is only going to get tougher as we move forward. And right now, uh, there's a log jam at the top of the SWAC East, and uh, we're happy to be in the log jam. And uh, so every week is going to be a unique challenge to whoever we're playing. The win over Arkansas Pine Bluff came after a week of adversity for JSU, where a new offensive coordinator was installed, and Coach Hughes talked about the emotional win. Oh, well, it was, um, it, was, uh, it, it was a very emotional time for us as a football team because we had came off a – a uh, tremendous, tremendous loss, uh, emotional loss at home that uh, really broke our hearts and, and our spirit. And the challenge was to continue to fight and uh, never die easy. And that was our motto going into it, no matter what happened. And and the game played out just like we talked about. They got a they got a lead early. We fumbled a punt. They got the lead, and then we fought back to make it seven six. And then they took the lead 14-6. Then we fought back to make it 14-9. And then we took the lead, made it 16-14. Then they took the lead, and, and the game just went back and forth. But but the part of uh, the challenge was to play with heart and spirit, uh, the spirit of the Jackson State Tigers and the uh, the Tiger Nation. And, and we weren't going to let go uh, until we found victory. And so the players told me, they said, Coach, don't worry about it. We, we're going to win this game no matter what the situation. So at times it wasn't looking very exciting for us, but the players, they embraced uh, our program and believed in the processes. And so that's what that was all about. 
Jackson State set a school record with three blocked field goals in that game, and blocking kicks is something Coach Hughes says he prides the team on. Well, it's one of the challenges of our program is that uh, – we, we want to be known as a team that plays with relentless effort, gives tremendous effort every single week, plays with a spirit, a fight, uh, never give in, never give up. And, uh, and so in our uh, mentality of our program, uh, aggressive special teams play is one of the things that uh, we stress and that we believe in. And we spend a lot of time on it, matter of fact. And uh, so uh, blocking those field goals was something that uh, is very exciting and entertaining to our players because it becomes contagious. You know, one blocks it, say, oh, I want to block one. And then another say, I want to block one. And, and before you know it, everybody, you know, we call it the block party. And, um, and also, Last week we had uh, three blocked punts against um, Alabama A&M. Two of them led to scores. And then uh, since I've been here, uh, we have, I, I believe, blocked more than 10 kicks in, in the three seasons I've been here. And also the Florida A&M game was saved also by a blocked field goal uh, to save that 16-14 that, uh, victory. So that's something that emphasized and our players really buy into it. Despite being 0-4, and four, Mississippi Valley is a team Coach Hughes says his Tigers will not take lightly. Uh, really, really good football team. Their, their record is not indicative of the way uh, that they play. Um, they go down to uh, Bethune-Cookman. They're up 14-0 uh, early. Uh, they're only down uh, one touchdown in the uh, uh, second half. They're down, I think it's 34-27 with three minutes left in the third quarter. Uh, well coach, Coach Dansby and the staff are doing a great job. Uh, they run the ball very efficient. I believe they have a quarterback uh, named Bryant and uh, uh, very, very, very Booker Chambers, number one, one of the better athletes in the conference. They try to use him in a lot of ways. Their offensive line is playing really well. They're coming off the ball. They're playing with a lot of confidence and, and their defense is solid. Uh, uh, their coverages, key schemes are solid, and I think they've got two of the better corners in the conference. So uh, going to be a tremendous challenge for us uh, playing at home. We've got to bring our A game, and we've got to play uh, up to a higher level. Like I said earlier, we have to be a better football team this coming Saturday than we were when we left Pine Bluff last Saturday. Coach Hughes says despite getting that first whack win of the year, there's still room for improvement for his team. Of course, we turned the ball over three times against uh, Arkansas. Uh, Pine Bluff and two of them led to score so uh, we have to limit the turnovers uh, penalty wise uh, we only had five penalties I think for 46 yards which is we, we have to maintain that uh, I think uh, Pine Bluff had 15 penalties for 157 yards uh, we have to maintain that uh, we, we uh, wore down a little bit defensively we allowed big plays uh, against uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff and we have to eliminate the big plays, um, and then we just have to take care of the football and be more consistent uh, in our scheme. That's Jackson State head football coach Tony Hughes. When we come back, we shine the spotlight on Tigers quarterback Jared Hayes. This is the Blue Cross Blue Shield JSU pregame report. We're back after this.
Welcome back to the Blue Cross Blue Shield JSU pregame report. Right now, it's time to shine the spotlight on Tigers quarterback Jared Hayes. Our MassCom graduate and JSU long snapper Ronza Anderson sat down with Hayes and has his conversation. I'm here with senior quarterback Jared Hayes. Nice of you to join us today. Thank you for having me. So, Jared, you're coming off a big win against the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff in this homecoming week in Jackson. Can you tell us the mood of the team right now? Um, <clears throat> you know, everyone's excited about the last victory that we had last week. Um, you know, my my mood is, you know, to try to keep everyone focused, you know, not to focus on the homecoming festivities, you know, to focus in on Mississippi Valley. and You know, we can enjoy homecoming after the victory. So, can you tell us, um, last week you all lost your offense coordinator, Hal Mummy, and Coach McCall stepped in, and you all did pretty good on offense. Can you tell us, you know, how, how did that transition go in the middle of the week? Uh, it was definitely a challenge. Uh, it was kind of, you know, just all the guys on offense coming together. Uh, we knew we would, you know, have some kinks to work out. Uh, you know, as you saw in the first half, uh, maybe even the first three quarters, you know, we kind of – Got off to a shaky start, but after that, you know, we kind of got back to things that we we, uh, we all were familiar with, you know, and things kind of got rolling. So uh, we have a full week this week to prepare for Mississippi Valley. So we should be we'll, – we'll be ready. Now, it was your first start as QB for Jackson State, and you put up over 200-plus yards with two touchdowns. Can you tell us how did that feel winning your first start as quarterback? Man, it was a sigh of relief. You know, uh, you know, something I've been waiting on for four or five years now uh, to start a game uh, and to win that game, especially in the fashion that we did. You know, um, very adversity packed game. You know, so it was definitely a, a big relief to um, pull out the victory. Now, after the game, you were very emotional. Uh, can you tell us what was going through your mind at that time? Um. Like I said, man, I, it's been a long, a long journey. Um, I've been through a lot, you know, in my college career and even before that. Uh, you know, like I said, so it was, it was just very emotional. The, the way that the game all ended, um, man, it, it was really—I don't want to say a dream come true, but you know, it was something I've been waiting on for a long time. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was. I was emotional just that it all, you know, it all worked out for me. You know, everything after everything I've been through. Now, this week, like I, like I asked before, you all are playing Valley, your biggest rivalry. Can you tell us how how is the mood of the team going into today's game? To the Valley game? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we focus, focusing in on Valley, um, focusing in on Coach McCall and his system offensively, um, you know, on what he wants us to run. You know, we're kind of inputting with him on what we feel comfortable running. He's, you know, implementing his system. Uh, Know, so we're just focusing right now, grinding hard until Saturday. So can you tell us, is there any quarterback or anybody in your life that has helped you get to where you're at now? Man, most definitely my dad. Uh, my dad played quarterback at Grambling State in 98 and 99 um, at Southern University a few years before that. So, uh, you know, he's the one that I really go talk to uh, about everything, just about life in general about football, um, schemes and stuff like that. Uh, so he's there every step of the way. Um, you know, he's even got my mom, you know, watching film with me and stuff like that. So <laughs> it's cool to have those two, um, you know, to support me in, in that side of my life. Now, you, talk, you talked about your journey earlier. If you would, can you tell us about your journey here to Jackson State? Well, I signed with uh, Southern University out of high school, um, Coach Chad Germany. Um, I redshirted my first year, 2014. My second year, my redshirt first year, 2015, I saw a little bit of action. Um, I ended up transferring to New Mexico military. Um, sat behind Jordan Tom, who was actually a quarterback at Ole Miss right now. Um, I did. I stayed there for a year to hope from January 2016 to December 2016. I signed with Jackson in January 2017. Um, you know, came through the spring, uh, worked my way up the ranks. You know, uh, kind of struggled in the little time that I saw last year, 2017. Uh, just continued to work hard um, under Coach Mummy. 
this spring. And, uh, man, I've just been working and, you know, waiting my turn, basically. So, um, Jerry, if you can explain to us, you know, outside of football, right. what kind of things do you like to do? Uh, my biggest pastime, I would probably say, a reading. Um, I like to read books. I like to write. I have a couple of journals that I write in, you know what I'm saying? Just basically, you know, my thoughts for the day or whatever I'm feeling at the time. Uh, everyone on the team calls me Reverend. Um, you know, I like to read my Bible. Uh, you know, things like that, man. I'm really just a chill, relaxed guy, so nothing too too major. So, Jared, you um time is slowly coming to an end here at Jackson State. Can you give us some of your future goals and some things that you would like to do in the near future? All right. uh, I'm actually looking into um, grad school right now. Um, I'm also looking into getting into some real estate and things like that. Um, maybe even coaching one day. Um, I told myself I didn't want to coach, but you know, the closer I get to to my playing career being over, you know, I realized that, man, I'm going to want to be around football eventually. Maybe coaching. Okay, man. So, Jared, um, most people, they set goals for themselves. Can you tell us some of the goals that you set for yourself and also some of the goals that you would like to see the team succeed in these next few right. games? Um, and I, I really, to be honest, I haven't even set any goals for myself. Um, and my goal is to continue to be a leader for the team, man, and just put some Ws on the board. Uh, you know, my stats and accolades, I already don't care at this point. You know, I just want to see the Tigers win. Uh, like I said, as far as my team, I just want to see them reach, you know, the maximum potential that they can um, with me as their leader. So that, that's what I would say my goal is. All right, Jared. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us today? Uh, man, I just want to thank everyone that supported me through this long journey. Uh, my parents, mom and dad, you know, my family, everyone else that supported me. Um, and everyone that believed in me, man, I appreciate y'all. Shout out to my teammates. Go Tigers. Well, thank you. Again, we are with quarterback senior Jared Hayes. Back to you, Rob. Thank you, Raza. When we come back, a conversation with Mississippi Valley State head football coach Vince Dancy. You're listening to the Blue Cross Blue Shield JSU pregame report on the Tiger Sports Network.
Welcome back to the Blue Cross Blue Shield JSU pregame report. Mississippi Valley head football coach Vince Dancy is in his first year as the Delta Devils head man, and he's coming off a tough loss against Bethune Cookman, a game in which Dancy says his team just ran out of gas. Very physical, hard fought game. Um, credit Coach Sim, Sims and his staff for a good game. Uh, uh, we started, did a great job of starting fast as we preached all week in practice. Wanted to jump out early so we can, you know, capture the momentum and, 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 and In that game against Bethune-Cookman, Valley did show signs that it can run the football, and Coach Danzi talks about the Devils' ground game. Um, just uh, being able to stay with it. You know, we, we had a, a bye week coming into the game, and we wanted to wanted that to be one of our main focuses, running the, run the ball and, and um, uh, just give, give our old lives some success. Man, I thought those young guys needed some success. Once again, Coach Danzi is playing against his alma mater, and he says the game will mean more to his players than to him. To be honest with you, um, it won't be my first time coming back coaching there. Um, I was, I came back. I think I, we played there in 2015. It was a very tight game, but um, just, just me personally, um, uh, not, nothing major for me, man. I'm, I'm really just really focused on my guys, man. I want, I want, I want the success more for those guys. Got to. Great group of young men, man, that, that, that understand that what we're trying to do here and how we're trying to build this program. And just all want it more for these seniors, man, because they've been doing a great job of keeping these freshmen, um, keeping their heads up and understanding that it's a process. And all you got to continue to do is go out and work hard and practice and some good things will, will, will come. But as far as me personally, man, it's, it's nothing personal about it, man. I know it's going to be an electric atmosphere. I, I, you know, I know that it personally. I know those things. I, I'm able to, you know, tell the guys how it how it's gonna be. But uh, my emotions, um, you know, I just keep those within and, and go out and coach this team the best way we, you know, I know how. Coach Danzi says his team is still hungry despite that win loss record. Um, I, I think they're I think they're great, man. Like I said, um, I got a bunch of I got a bunch I got a bunch of guys that's willing to come out every day and just work hard and and compete and understanding that. You know, man, we're 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 doing the things that we're asked. They're doing the things that we're asking them to do, and let's just focus on the little thing and taking it every and, and taking it one game at a time. But but coming out and, and practicing the right way and doing things the little things the right way, and they're starting to see some a little success. Not 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 trying to brag or you know or, or talk about more victories, but I, I, I'm really proud of these guys the way they. They perform, and game in and game out. They play hard. They're physical. They, you know, one thing about it, uh, you, you know, if you're going to play us, I know you you, you got to be ready because um, week in and week out, these guys come ready to play, and I'm very proud of the resilience they showed this weekend in a hostile environment. But being able to, you know, to go, you know, to, to be up by 14, go down by 24, and come back. 
back and battle and make it a um a, a one possession game and, and, and we had the ball to you know, either to take the lead or a lead or tie the game. So just very proud of the effort, man, and the and the perseverance and all those things that they show that they showing us and the staff, man. They 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 just got a good group, man, and they, they, they love football and you can see it on film. That's Mississippi Valley head football coach Vince Dancy. When we come back, I look around black college football with Donna Ware and the Box to Roll Blitz. You're listening to the Blue Cross Blue Shield JSU pregame report. We'll have more after the break. Take a look around black college football with Donna Ware and the Box to Row Blitz. This is your weekly edition of the Box to Row Blitz. I'm Donald Ware. First, let's go to Durham, where North Carolina Central was hosting Howard. The Eagles coming off that 55-14 loss at the hands of Florida AM. And with the Eagles leading 24 to 19 early in the third quarter. And he pulls it back. Looking for the left side, and McCoy, McCoy reels it in and muscles his way in for the touchdown. How about that to start off the second half? Chauncey Caldwell to Xavier McCoy from 38 yards, and the Eagles extended their lead to 31-19. to Now, we pick things up in the fourth quarter as the Eagles still have the lead. Newton hands it off, and Dorsey has all kinds of space. He is in for the touchdown. How about that? They go for it on fourth down and come up with a score. With 6-19 remaining in the fourth quarter, Khalid Dorsey's 19-yard touchdown run gave the Bison the 35-34 lead as the two-point conversion failed. But the Eagles weren't done. So Caldwell takes the snap. He runs it in. He's across the goal line. Touchdown, North Carolina Central. From three yards out with 24 seconds remaining. And that was the game winner as the Eagles defeated Howard 40-35. to That audio courtesy of the NCCU Sports Network, Carter Woodill on the call. Now to Lake Wells, Florida, where Edward Waters was taking on Warner University in the fourth quarter with Warner leading 27 to 20 and the Tigers having to answer. Takes the snap, back the pass is Jones. Jones will keep, Jones looking. Jones is gonna walk in, touchdown EWC. From six yards out and Edward Waters tied the game at 27. Warner would go up 
30 to 27 on a field goal in overtime and with the Tigers having to answer. Jones under center, takes a snap, keeper for Jones, pushing the pile, going over the left side. No signal yet, touchdown Tigers! Touchdown Edward Waters! Let's go home to Jacksonville at 500! Three and three on the year! My man, Joshua Jackson on the EWC Sports Network as the Tigers defeated Warner 33 to 30. Now, to Baltimore, where Morgan State was coming off a bye week after defeating North Carolina A&T two weeks ago. We picked things up in the fourth quarter with the Bears down to South Carolina State. Get to the tailback, running wing to the 10, to the 5, to the house. Touchdown, Morgan. It was homecoming in Baltimore, and Jordan Riggins' 13-yard touchdown run gave the Bears the 18 to 14 lead, but the Bulldogs looking to play spoiler. Tyrese Nick to throw, pressure off the edge. He'll fling it, got a man wide open. Omar Cummings, touchdown dogs. 23 yard touchdown pass. Tyrese Nick to Omar Cummings. My man Lamont Germany on WEAA in Baltimore. South Carolina State gets its first victory of the season, defeating Morgan State 21 to 18. Now to Lorman, Mississippi, where it was also homecoming at Alcorn State as the Braves were hosting Alabama State. Let's go to overtime where Alcorn State had first crack. Again, another hand off the wall. This time it goes up the middle. And just like we said, it, he goes in and walks into the end zone. Deshaun Waller from 22 yards. The two-point conversion was good, and the Braves held the 22-14 to 14 lead. Alabama State would answer as Kadar Davis found Mitch Jefferson from six yards out. The two-point conversion was good, and we were tied at 22 apiece. The teams would then trade field goals, and ultimately we were tied at 25 in the fifth overtime. Alabama State with one more shot to win it all. That whole kick is up. Kick is good. Good, Alabama State. That was Travis Jerome on WVAS in Montgomery. Hunter Hansen's 37-yard field goal in the fifth overtime proved to be the difference as Alabama State upset Alcorn State 28 to 25 in five overtimes. On this week's edition of From the Press Box to Press Row, I give you my top five players at the midway point. From the Press Box to Press Row, the radio show airs weekly on radio stations across the country. For a radio station in your area that carries the program, log on to BoxToRow.com. That's Donna Ware and the Box to Row Blitz. When we come back, we'll go live to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium for the starting lineups and much, much more. This is the Blue Cross Blue Shield JSU pregame report on the Tiger Sports Network.
And welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. A beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon as we are moments away from kickoff of today's game between Jackson State and Mississippi Valley State. As we said in the pregame show earlier in the show, this series has been one of the most lopsided series in college football. Of the 64 times these two teams have played, Jackson State has won 56 times, Coach. How do you dominate a team like that over the years? <laughs> Talent, Coach. This tradition. You know, Jackson State has a rich tradition in winning. You know, Mississippi Valley also had a rich tradition in winning when they had Archie Cooley and, and those guys there, Jerry Rice. Jackson State has just, you know, been able to take over the series. And today, Coach, when you look at this game, what are your keys to victory for Jackson State? Well, again, you have to continue to play well on defense. You always have to remember that we have one of our own at Mississippi Valley with the great Jackson State pedigree, Vincent Dancy. So his team may feed off, should feed off of him, but you also need to make sure that we, we play good defense, uh, eliminate the penalties, and we have to score on offense. How concerned are you with Vince Dancy being the head coach, knowing that he knows some secrets about Jackson State, or has that been too long ago? Well, it hasn't been too long ago. You know, once you're a Jacksonian, you're always a Jacksonian. He was, he was coached by some of the best coaches, and, you know, his team should feed off of him. He's been doing a good job. The scores does not show it, but I, I looked at it at last week when I talked about Bethune-Cookman. They jumped all over Bethune-Cookman, and then they just couldn't hold on. So Jackson State opened the season with a loss to Southern Miss, and that was followed up by that rain out or that storm out game against uh, Tennessee State in the Southern Heritage Classic. Jackson State would beat FAMU, lose to Alabama A&M in heartbreaking fashion after going up 16 to nothing, and then won last week against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Now Mississippi Valley opened the season, losing to North Dakota State 35 to 7. They lost to Jacksonville State following that 71 to 0. And then they lose to Alcorn 56 to 20. And last week they lost to Bethune Cookman 41 27. But you can see in that Bethune Cookman game, as you mentioned, that they've gotten better. They, yeah. They're getting better. So, uh, and, and, and you heard Coach Dancy in the pregame show. He said that he sees that his team is getting better. The running game is getting better. And is that a cause for concern, Coach? Because he kind of made me nervous when he said that. Well, you, you know, it's, it's a cause for concern when, when you go back to last week's game and you go back and you look at the total offense that our defense gave up, 514 yards of total offense. Mm -hmm. That's unusual for a Jackson State defense that you and I have seen the last two seasons. So, you know, it is a concern, especially when you can run the football, you always have a chance when you can run the ball. All right, and Jackson State owns a three-game winning streak against the Delta Devils. Valley's last victory over Jackson State came four years ago when the Devils came here to Jackson and beat JSU 27-23. That was on October 11, 2014. So um, Jackson State, they do not want a duplicate of that. No. <laughs> I can assure you that we don't. Wow. All right, so let's look at the starting lineup now for the Jackson State offense. First up along that offensive line for JSU at left tackle, you got Dante Fisher. He's a 6'3", 350-pound senior out of Houston, Texas. Dante wears number 70. At left guard for JSU is Omari Ketchens. He's a 6'3", 265-pound sophomore out of Jackson. He played at Murrah High School. Amari wears number 60 for JSU. The center for the Tigers is Melvin Hollis, a 6'1", 315-pound junior out of Jackson, Mississippi. He uh, wears number 77. On the right side of the line is Donnell Pastor, a 6'6", 320-pound junior, a senior, rather, out of Augusta, Georgia. Donnell wears number 74 for JSU. Charles Moffitt is the right tackle for the Tigers. He's a 6'8", 280-pound junior out of Gulfport, Mississippi, wearing number 64. The receivers for Jackson State, starting with the ex-receiver, that's Carl Ollie. He's a 6'3", 200-pound sophomore out of Jackson. He played at Forest Hill High School. Carl wears number six for the Tigers. The other receivers, Terrell Kennedy, he uh, has been hampered by injury, so don't know if he's going to play tonight or not. Uh, if he does, he is a 5'11", 205-pound junior out of Mobile, Alabama. Terrell wears number four. Benji Parrish is the Y receiver for Jackson State. <laughs> he is a 6'2", 200-pound senior from Ellenwood, Georgia. Benji wears number eight. Romello Shoemake, he's the all-around athlete for Jackson State. He's a 5'10", 185-pound senior from Lithonia, Georgia. Romello wears number 23. And the running back for Jackson State is Jordan Johnson. Jordan Johnson is a 6'200-pound uh, junior from Terry, Mississippi. Last week, he ran for 
63 yards in that win over Arkansas Pine Bluff. And the quarterback for JSU is Jared Hayes. You heard him in the pregame show in our player spotlight. He's a six foot, 190 pound senior from central Louisiana. He wears number five. And uh, Jared said that they called him preacher on the team because he likes to read. He likes to read his Bible. He says he's a quiet guy. And um, he just, his main thing is that he loves to read, Coach. Well, that's a good thing. We need him today to make sure he reads the coverage as well, make great decisions with the football, control the, the offensive unit, and let's get a victory with, with this uh, Jackson State football team today. All right, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at that starting defense for the Jackson State Tigers. You're listening to the JSU pregame show on the Tiger Sports Network. Welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Rob J, Coach Daryl Asbury. We'll be joined momentarily by Sam Brown as well as Spencer McClinty as we bring you the play-by-play -play story on a beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Jackson, Mississippi. Let's give you the starting defense now for the Jackson State Tigers along the defensive end, uh, the defensive line rather, Malik Hamner. He's the uh, defensive end for the Tigers. He's a 6'4", 240-pound senior out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Malik wears number 10. He was named the SWAC Special Teams Player of the Week after blocking two field goals against the Delta Devils. Charles Anderson, a 6'3", 285-pound sophomore from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, wears number 98. The defensive end is Khalil Johnson, a 6'5", 245-pound junior out of Jackson. He wears number 13 for the Tigers. Darius Woods, the middle linebacker for the Tigers. He is a 6-foot, 245-pound senior from Jacksonville, Florida. He wears number 52. The linebacking core consists of, or we round him out with Keontre Hampton, a 6-foot, 225-pound freshman from West Point, Mississippi. Keontre wears number 40 for the Tigers. And rounding out the linebacking core is Eric Bowie. Bowie is a 6'2", 225-pound senior from Monroe, Louisiana. Also in the secondary for Jackson State, you have Tyler Rogers, a 5'10 junior out of Starkville, Mississippi. Tony Alex, a 6-foot junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And C.J. Holmes, he is a 175-pound sophomore from New Orleans, Louisiana. Ryan Thayard rounds out that secondary for the Tigers on defense. Thayard is a 6'2", 190-pound junior from New Orleans, Louisiana. Right now we are going to pause as the invocation is being done on the field, which will be followed by the national anthem. Out of Alcorn shall rise 
out of Jackson shall rise. Jackson State University, we will rise, we will rise, we will rise. Amen. All right, we are awaiting the national anthem, which will be done by the sonic boom of the South there, Coach. National Anthem being rendered by the Jackson State Sonic Boom of the South Marching Band. JSU coach by Tony Hughes. Assistant coach Derek McCall. He's the interim offensive coordinator for the Tigers. John Hendrick is a defensive coordinator and linebackers coach. Lionel Stokes, the cornerbacks coach. Dwayne Curry, the defensive line coach. Charles Mitchell, he's in charge of the safeties. Carl Roberts, offensive line. William Sleepy Robinson, he's uh, in charge of the running backs for JSU. LaBelle Williams is a strength and conditioning coach, and Gloria Miller is in charge of football, internal operations, and in any way. All right, Coach. <laughs> We're getting set for this one on a beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Jackson, Mississippi, <laughs> Coach. What, uh, you know, how big of a boost was that win last week, Coach, against uh, Pine Bluff? It was a big boost, Coach. It was a must-win uh, situation for Coach Hughes and the program, and, and and the kids needed that victory, Coach, to just to keep everything going, keep the morale up. They've just been playing so hard, and, you know, that win was long overdue. All right, we're just moments away from kickoff as the captains are going to meet at midfield for the coin toss. You're still listening to the Blue Cross Blue Shield JSU pregame report. It is a beautiful day. Homecoming 2018 at Jackson State. And during the week of homecoming, there was also the inauguration of Jackson State's 11th president, Dr. William B. Bynum, Jr. And all of the activities around the inauguration, Coach, were wonderful, man. That's, I, I tell you, I know it was a big night. I know you all had a great time. And I know Dr. Bynum really enjoyed the inauguration as well. And Dr. Bynum told me that he listens to us on the air there, Coach. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said he had to meet with you privately. <laughs> meet with, he said meet you, with us? He said, he, he said oh, I, us? I, I gave my pronouns mixed up. Coach. Yeah, us. <laughs> he said that, um, no, nah, Coach, he's, uh, he enjoys the broadcast and the passion that we give to Jackson State football. That's great. I like the tiger. Have you, you noticed the tiger? I like that. Oh, the inflatable yeah, tiger. And, I like uh, that. I'm t it's, it, there's an inflatable, um, I guess, inflatable, inflatable that the players run through, and there's an inflatable tiger on top of that, a big, huge inflatable yeah. tiger, and they say the smoke comes out of his mouth. Yeah, the, smoke is, the smoke is getting ready. Okay, so I can't wait to see this, Coach. 
Nice crowd here at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. If you're out listening to the game, you still have time to make it here and come in inside and check out Jackson State University football. Mostly sunny skies here today in Jackson. Highs today around 79 degrees, zero chance of rain. Wind blowing out of the south, southeast at 10 miles an hour. Currently in Jackson, it is 76 degrees at 152 on a Saturday afternoon. Time and temperature brought to you by Entergy. Mississippi Valley coach in their gray uniforms. Hadn't seen those in a while, huh? Gray uniforms with the green numbers. The green helmets with the Valley State logo on those helmets as the four team captains for Mississippi Valley prepare to meet at midfield. Now you actually said smoke is going to come out the Tiger's mouth. Yes, sir. Smoke is going to come out of the Tiger's mouth. You know, we have a third member of our broadcast crew, Spencer McClinty, down on the field. What's going on down there, Spin? We're having a little technical difficulties with Spin. We'll try to get back to him in just a moment. Jackson State, in the meantime, will be coming out in their blue jerseys, the blue pants with the white stripe, the white numbers on those jerseys, by the way, the white sleeves, and the blue helmets with familiar JSU block logo. That logo was uh, created by W.C. Gordon. The legend. Yes, sir. <laughs> the legend. I saw him at the um, inauguration dinner, and he shook my hand, and I'm not going to tell you what he said after he shook it. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> I'm sure it was something very motivational. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I can tell, say this. After he said it, I said, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> now that's the coach we know. <laughs> All right. Tell, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? It certainly is, Coach. Team captains for Jackson State. Eric Bowie. Ramik Wallace, the receiver for the Tigers. Also offensive lineman Dante Fisher. And Romello Shoemake, they are your team captains for Jackson State as they get set to meet Mississippi Valley at midfield. JSU still with the little red accent there, Coach. You yeah, like I see that? it. I like it, Coach. I even brought my red towel, so I'm I'm red, <laughs> red with them, Coach. <laughs> All right, we're just about set to get this one underway as they meet for the coin toss. And should JSU win the coin toss, what do you think Coach Hughes will do with it? We'll probably uh, defer to the second half and put the defense on the field. Let the defense go ahead and set the tone early. To, you know, to show Valley, this is the kind of night you're going to have all night long when you're dealing with a Jackson State defense. All right, Mississippi Valley coming into this ball game pretty much uh, last in every category in the conference except receiving, pass receiving, where well, they're ranked near the top. But passing, they're ranked near the bottom. How does that work, Coach? Well, I, I tell you what, Coach, their, their offensive coordinator um, is a guy that I know from Maurice Flowers from over at, on the East Coast when I was over there. Maurice did a good job with their offense. And, you know, that's where they're getting this passing from. He's a guy that likes to stretch the field and, you know, get it in the guy's hands real quick. So it's interesting what he's going to do here. I'm loving this Tiger. Yeah, Coach. This inflatable tiger, I'm loving that girl. Like he's standing there looking at the prey, looking like some prey ready to jump and eat. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're shaking it around and making it look like it's coming to life. And also, as you come in, you see big, huge signage of former players here at Jackson State, like Walter Payton and Jackie Slater that Ashley Robinson is really making, he's bringing the tradition back to Jackson State. And that's what we need, Coach. When you have guys like that that have played the game, that have really enjoyed it, you know, you, you need things like that. And Ashley's doing a great job of bringing that tradition back. And that's the only way Jackson State is going to get back into play with people like Ashley Robinson bringing the tradition back.
they're gonna call the coin toss, all right? With the helmet in his head and the fish in his tail. What's your call, Captain? Call his tail. Mississippi Valley State won the toss, decided to defer. We'll have the kickoff when we come back on the Tigers Sports Network. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi partners with our communities to promote living healthy. With the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, we're empowering you to take control of your personal wellness journey and to find the joy of being active at every age and helping you build proud, healthy communities with a heart of hospitality because it's about you, your health, your life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. I was just devastated, but it happened so fast. And I was literally in shock. I really didn't know what to do. A friend of mine had used it once before. If you need to call somebody, make sure you call Richard Swartz because they're going to be on their job. Don't hesitate. Call Richard Swartz. Richard Schwartz, I work just as hard for you. I won't settle for $1 less than you deserve. Call 601 and all eight. Free background information is available upon request. Richard Schwartz and Associates, one call, that's all. All right, we are just about set to get this one underway as Mississippi Valley will kick it away after winning the toss. They decided to defer. Ruben Flackwin will kick it away for Mississippi Valley. Back deep for JSU is Keyshawn Harper and Romello Shoemake. Shoemake and Harper standing back at their own 10-yard line. Valley will be kicking from right to left again in their gray jerseys. And the green numbers, green helmets. And we are underway here at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. It's an end-over-end -end kick. It is fielded at the 5 by Porter. He's across the 20. And to the 25-yard line where he is brought down. That's where Jackson State will start, Coach. Good return right there. I, I thought we had a little crease, but Valley kind of closed it up. But we got a good chance, Coach McCall, to bring his offense out and get going early. Jared Hayes is the starting quarterback for Jackson State. In the backfield with him is Keyshawn Harper. As well as number 77, Melvin Hollis, at right guard, number Jordan Johnson, on first and 10, JSU fakes the handoff, throws along the right side, it is batted around and incomplete. Well, I'll tell you right there, Coach, what happened when, when they came out, the receiver, the running back motioned out, Hayes made the right read, but. Benjamin has to keep going to the next window for the slant. He just stopped in the one. It stopped in front of the defensive back. Second down and 10 now for Jackson State from its own 25-yard line. We're just underway here at Memorial Stadium on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Hayes in the shotgun. Two backs in the backfield. He'll give it to Jordan Johnson, trying to turn that left corner. Knocks over a defender. Still on his feet, brought down after taking it across the 30 to about the 35-yard line. Boy, he had some great balance there, Coach. Yeah, he did, Coach. That was a heck of a stiff for him. He stiff for him, that Mississippi Valley player. Love it. I mean, he really pushed Third him to the ground. For the Tigers of Jackson State. They mark it at the 32-yard line. It is third down and two now for Jackson State. Hayes again in the shotgun. Three receivers in the game. Valley showing blitz. They'll give it to Johnson again. He's hit in the backfield, stays on his feet, and is brought down right at the first down marker. Uh, I'll tell you, this will be big if we could get a first down in the first possession. You know? I don't think he got it, Coach. I think he's going to be a yard short. Look like he kind of lost his balance a little bit, huh? Absolutely. 
that would have been a big drive for us, Coach, if we could have got a first down in the first possession. Instead, it's three and out. So Jock went on to punt it away for Jackson State. Great defensive effort by Mississippi Valley. Back deep for the Delta Devils is Booker Chambers out of Greenwood, Mississippi. And we have a timeout already. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. and one Jackson State will punt it away to the Delta Devils Jockman's kick is a high kick and it drives Chambers all the way back to the 17 he feels it along the far side line and he makes a one yard return so Chambers playing a little bit dangerous right there coach yeah he, I, I would have thought he would have let it go out of bounds coach because <laughs> those guys Jackson State we were hustling down the field so Valley will begin this drive the opening drive of the game at the 24-yard line. First down and 10 for Mississippi Valley. Looking for their first win of the season. At quarterback for the Delta Devils is DeJeric Bryant. Defensive end, number 10, Malik Hamner. Defensive tackle, number 98, Charles. Oh, it's a long snap. It's over the head of the quarterback. He's trying to wrestle for it. It's back down at the three-yard line. So a bad snap by the Delta Devils. They managed to fall on the football, but they lose about 23 yards on that, Coach. Yeah, that, I mean, and Jackson State did a good job of getting after the football. When you look at him, he just missed the ball, and we just did a good job of getting back there. Second and 21. For Credit Khalil Johnson with that tackle. So it is second down and very long for the Delta Devils. They have it at their own three-yard line. Linebacker number seven, Eric Bowie. Bryant, the quarterback for the Delta Devils. He's back in the shotgun in the end zone. And he's going to take off with it, calls his own number. Picks up uh, about four yards to about the 10-yard line. But it'll be third down and 25. Yeah, Keandre Hampton on the tackle right there. They just ran a quarterback read. Jackson State is in that 3-2 defense, cover four. Four receivers in the game for Valley. Two to the left, two to the right. Bryant in the shotgun on third down and very long. There's a swing pass to the right side. The catch is made, but not much after that. Making the catch for the Delta Devils is Quinn McElfish. Now, last year, he came into this game leading the swack in receiving. Didn't catch a pass last year. So that's his first catch against Jackson State in two years. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I think he was suspended or something last week. Last no, he year. played. He, he, he played. played. Yeah, he was suspended. <laughs> he was frustrated. <laughs> So this is going to give Jackson State great field position as they punt it away. Warren Newman standing back for the Tigers at his 35, make it the 45-yard line. Jackson State adept at blocking kicks. This is a high kick. Newman fielded at midfield. He's at the 40. Here's a flag down. He's at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, but a flag is down on the field. Yeah, you got a clip back here blocking the back, should I say. But that's – and if you eliminate that flag, Coach, that's what we're talking about, win yeah. the kicking game. You have to get points out the kicking game. And that was a good job of Coach uh, block left return – block right return left and set the wall up to, to Valley sideline. That was a good job of setting it up. All we got to do now is – 
Wow, that was a beautiful return beautiful. by Newman. He's very fast, and a holding penalty will bring it back, and Jackson State will start near midfield. Let's see if we can check in now with Spencer McClinty down on the field. Yeah, Rob, that. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty good return, but as you said, that was that was because of the penalty. But I think Coach Asbury made a good point on the Tigers' first drive in that if they had able to, were able to get that first down, they would have not repeated last week's um, series in, in that they went three and out of their first series against UAPB. So we're going to see what happens here in the second series. All right, Spen. First down and 10 for Jackson State right at midfield. Hayes remains in at quarterback. He'll hand it to Jordan Johnson. Johnson takes it inside Valley Territory to about the 45-yard line before being brought down. Just ran an inside zone to the to Valley sideline. But the, the, and Jordan Johnson just put his foot in the ground and got vertical. And that's what he does well. He puts his foot in the ground and he gets vertical. Second down and five now for Jackson State. No score. Ten minutes to go here in the first quarter. Hayes back in the shotgun. You have four receivers in the ball game. They give it to Johnson again. Loses his balance. Takes it to the first down marker, but another flag is down on the play. Yeah, and, and we may have to get Jordan some more spikes in his cleats, Coach, because that's the second time he's trying to plant. And it, and it looked like he's planting off that inside foot, and that could cause you to. Hold a penalty against Jackson State. And, you know, he slipped down last week against uh, Pine Bluff several times. So, yeah, it has to be something with his cleats. Yeah. So it's going to be second down at 15 now for Jackson State as they push this ball back to the 45-yard line back in Jackson State's own territory. JSU can pick up the first down at the Delta Devils 40-yard line. No score here in the first quarter. Rob J. Daryl Asbury and Spencer McClinty. There's a snap. Jared rolls to his right, looking, throws underneath. The catch is made. Not much there, about a three-yard gain on that play before being driven out of bounds on the near side. Yeah, Hayes was flushed out of the pocket and scrambled the Jackson State sideline. Jackson State was in three uh, empty backfield. Now they're going to just hurry up mode. Let's see what happens here, Coach. Third down and about seven for Jackson State. JSU will be snapping the ball from the Near side hash mark again. Three, four receivers in the ball game for Jackson State. Three to the left of Hayes, one to the right. You have Jordan Johnson in the backfield standing to Hayes' right shoulder. There's a snap. Here come the Delta Devils. Fires across the middle. The catch is made, and this will be enough for a first down. This is Jackson State's first first down of the ball game. It's an AARP first down at the 41-yard line. I tell you what was impressive right there, Coach. They brought the pressure from the three receiver side. The running, the, the offensive line slid into the protection to that side. I mean, it was, it was a beautiful, like a painting drawing when he stepped in front of him, picked up the protection. That was a great job, and Jordan Johnson eyed that linebacker. Great job. All right, they mark it at the 40-yard line. It is first down for Jackson State as they operate from left to right. Jarrett Hayes, the quarterback. They call him the preacher on the team because he says he loves to read his Bible. All right, there's Hayes. He's going to hand it off to Harper, who takes it to the Delta Devils 35-yard line. Harper. Came back and just ran the, the outside zone to the right. Harper just got vertical. Second and six for the Tigers. This is the sixth play of this drive. It is second down and six now for JSU from the Delta Devils. 36. Fakes the handoff. Throws along the right side. What a catch by Shoemake. Heck of a catch. Wow. Shoemake down to the 30. They may... This may be another first down as they move the chain, so it's another AARP first down for Jackson State. That's a good job. Shoemaker just ran a just ran a, a, a eight yard hitch route. Jackson State getting closer and closer to that steeple investment red zone. Coming up on eight minutes to go here in the first quarter. No score, but Jackson State on the move at the Delta Devils 29 yard line. Fake the handoff to Harper. Hayes flips it out 
to Benji Parrish, and they're going to say he was incomplete as he caught that pass out of bounds. Yeah, look, trying to run a little RPO. Again, the receiver has to know his awareness on the football field. So Harper comes out of the ball game. Newman comes out as well. Jordan Johnson back in for the Tigers. Valley with a four-man front here on second down and 10 for JSU from the Delta Devils, 29-yard line. There's a snap. He give it to Jordan Johnson off the right side. And Johnson turning that corner, still on his feet and knocked out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. Another AARP first down for the Tigers. Good job just running that lead out of the shotgun with that fullback and Jordan in the backfield. Valley probably thought they were going to throw the football. Good job of lining up with that pistol offense set, running the football. Well, when it looked like he was headed out of bounds, he stayed in bounds and kept going. It is first and 10 for Jackson State from the Delta Devils, 13. They give it to Johnson again, and this time he is tripped up after a gain of about one and a half yards. Came back with the, with the lead to the left that time. Darnell Pastor just needs to work a little bit harder. Let's keep this guy from crossing his face, and we may have had a touchdown right there. Aubrey Powell on the tackle for Mississippi Valley. This is the 10th play of this drive for Jackson State that started at midfield. Second down and eight, Jackson State from the Delta Devils, 13-yard line. Hayes underneath center, gives it to Johnson again. Johnson trying to take it up the middle and is brought down again after a short gain on that play. Just run up underneath center that time, just trying to punch it in and just run straight lead. I, I expect some play action off of this one right here. If they go back in the shotgun, expect Coach McCall to go up underneath center, do a little play action, and possibly hit the tight end for a touchdown. Jackson State at the Delta Devils' eight-yard line. 6.23 to go here in the first quarter. No score, but JSU on the move. Hayes in the shotgun. He has two backs in the backfield with him. Takes the snap. Hayes looking. Has time. Throws in the end zone. Touchdown, Jackson State. Romello Shoemaker on the touchdown catch for the Tigers. Good job right there. Coach just went Florida. I, I mean... <laughs> He ran a flag, slot receiver ran a flag, outside receiver ran a smash route. I made the statement Florida because that's something that we used to run when we worked <laughs> together. <laughs> that is touchdown is brought to you by Zaxby's as Jackson State attempts the point after. Tigers six, Valley nothing, pending the outcome of this point after. Ronza Anderson will snap it. Salazar will hold and Jockman We'll do the place kicking duties. Oh, you have moving on the line, and Mississippi Valley may be called for offsides. Now, with, with them doing that, do you do you go for two here, Coach? No, get the one, Coach. Get the one. They're going to move a little bit closer. <laughs> get the one, Coach. They're going to move it closer to the goal line. Get the one, Coach. What should they do, Spin? <laughs> I'm sure Spin's going to agree with me. <laughs> All right, and I think Coach Hughes is going to agree with you, too, that Coach. Yeah, get the sure points, Coach. Salazar, one of the most accurate kickers in the league. He'll be kicking it to the win. Oh, it was a low snap, but the kick is up, and it is good. 6.06 to go. Jackson State strikes first. The Tigers lead it 7-0. We're back after this on the Tigers Sports Network. So you haven't washed your lucky socks since that fourth quarter comeback five years ago. At C Spire, we get it. You'll do anything to help your team win. Just like anything we do is inspired by you. We're your biggest fan. Lucky socks and all. From business to home to wireless, our inspiration is always you. C Spire, customer inspired. Switch and save up to $500 on our best phones with trade-in. Details at cspire.com. Did you know that over 90% of small businesses that lose their computer data due to a disaster will close within a year? Protect your computers with TeamLogic IT. TeamLogic IT will proactively monitor your systems 24-7, back up your data, protect against viruses, and respond immediately when there's a problem. Keep your small business in business. Call Harold Loving at 601-878-1900 or visit us online at teamlogicit.com slash jacksonms. We're 
back at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Jackson State 7, Mississippi Valley nothing after that eight-yard touchdown pass from Hayes to Shoemaker. And this kick will go out of bounds, and Valley will have great field position after this kick bounces out of bounds. Jackson State football brought to you in part by Kimelon Campbell. She's running for Hines County Circuit Court Judge, Sub-District 2. Kimelon has practiced law for 20 years. She's an assistant district attorney prosecuting murders, armed robberies, and armed carjackings. She's committed to public safety and community development. Kimelon will work diligently to keep our community safe, increase the quality of life in Hines County, and administer justice firmly and fairly. Get out and vote November 6th. So Mississippi Valley, Coach, will start from its own 35-yard line, and this is something that uh, Jocklin has had trouble with these last few games, kicking the ball out of bounds. Yeah, he has. He kicked maybe one or two or three out of bounds last week. <laughs> Chambers. There's the first down throw. Catch is made. Not much there at all as they get right back to the line of scrimmage. Jackson State tried to. Mississippi Valley tried to throw a screen out there, and Jackson State wasn't fooled by it. The defense does a great job of getting to the football. I see a lot of energy out of the defense, a little bit more than I saw last week, Coach. Did Jarek Bryant is a quarterback. He's a transfer from Southern Mississippi. So they give Valley a yard on that play, bringing up second and nine. Valley operating from right to left. 5.30 to go here in the first quarter. And they'll hand it off. And... Great job by the defense after that three-yard pickup, bringing up third down and about five from the 40-yard line. Good job. Jackson State wasn't fooled. The quarterback is trying to read that linebacker. If that linebacker goes with the flow of the, the sweep, he's going to pull it and run, but the linebacker stayed at home. Great job. Third down and six, they're calling it. They have the ball marked at the Valley 39-yard line. Delta Devils trailing 7 to nothing here in the first quarter. Under five to go in the first. Bryant, the quarterback, here's a man in motion from left to right, and the flag is down. This is going to be false start on the Delta Devils or a bad formation or something. Did you see how quick that official jumped in there, Coach? Yeah, he jumped in there real quick. <laughs> yeah, this penalty is on Mississippi Valley. You see it, that man in, well, actually, that offensive lineman move, that left tackle, yeah, he got up and moved. Tackle. Yeah, big 65. That's Anthony Phillips, the junior from New Orleans. So they bag Valley up five more yards, so it's going to be third down and 11 now for the Delta Devils. Here's Bryant back to throw, firing it along the right side. It is batted away by Jackson State. Great job by C.J. Holmes knocking that pass down. Yeah, I tell you what, now, when you look at Valley's schedule, Coach, Valley has been battle-tested, Coach. C.J. Holmes with the breakup, and Valley will have to punt it away, and this punt is going to be brought to you by Porter's Insurance. JSU should get good field position from this. Warren Newman standing back at his 20-yard line. Valley will be punting from their 21. Again, the Delta Devils kicking from right to left on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Jackson. There's a kick, not much, not much pressure by the JSU special teams as this ball bounces all the way down to the 20, inside the 20, down to about the 15-yard line. So a nice punt by the Delta Devils. 4-11 to go here in the first quarter. Jackson State leading 7-0. We're back after this.
Jackson State starting its drive from the 16 on first down. They pick up six yards on second down. Not much there as Mississippi Valley's defense stopped Jackson State after a one-yard gain. So it is now third down for JSU, third down from its own 24-yard line. Coach McCall is doing a good job of mixing it up, Coach, but it looks like his, his mindset, he wants to, you know, pound the football Mississippi Valley and let them big Jackson State offensive linemen get after those defensive linemen. Hayes back in the shotgun on third down and short. He'll hand it off to Quinton Brown, and he knocks over a defender and takes it across the 40. He's at midfield along the far sideline, and Quinton Brown, he's a big old boy. He just barreled his way into Valley territory, Coach. He did. He did that, Wow. Coach. I mean, good physical running back, hard running back, Coach. That's an AARP first down for Jackson State as the Tigers move it to the Mississippi Valley 39-yard line on a nice run by big old Quinton Brown. He's a sophomore out of Monticello, Mississippi. Hayes hands it off again. Jordan, actually, this is... This is uh, Harper. Harper that picks up about four yards to the 35-yard line. I tell you, the guy that really sprung that play also out there on that last play was the receiver, number 84, Hines, Coach Cameron Hines. He really did a great job of blocking out there. They mark it at the 36. Coming up on two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Jackson State 7, Mississippi Valley 0. Jackson State again in the Delta Devils territory. You got Harper in the backfield. On second down and about seven. Hayes fakes the handoff. Here comes the pressure. Throws, and it is incomplete. He was looking to get that ball out to Malik, I'm sorry, to Ramik Wallace, who couldn't make the catch. He was, Coach. One thing about that play action, you got to make sure you secure that linebacker that those two running back. If you're going slide protection and you send both backs the same way, Somebody has to be responsible for that linebacker that that running back is supposed to take. That was the guy forced Hayes to flush out the pocket. Third down and seven for JSU from the Mississippi Valley 36-yard line. A minute 45 to go here in the first quarter on a beautiful sunny day, a fall day here in Jackson. Hayes again in the shotgun, takes a snap, looking, fires across the middle, catch is made, and that's another AARP first down as Kobe Gates picks up that first down to the Delta Devils 28-yard line. Good job, Coach McCall, working in the middle of the football field. You know, spoke with him early in the week and had a conversation, and you know, that's something that we both talked about, the middle of the field. We got to work the middle of the field, and once you start working the middle of the field, Coach, it forces those safeties to come down, then you can create your mismatches. Ball is at the Valley 29-yard line. Jackson State again on the move. Tigers lead it 7 to nothing. Hayes in the shotgun here on first and 10. Hayes takes the snap, hands it off. Harper around the right side at the 20, and another flag is down. It's going to be brought back, Coach. Well, I tell you, them referee, you know, I wish you and I could send a telegram to them and tell them that we know their flags work, Coach. Why you want to put me in it? <laughs> Why up. you want to put me in it? Coach? It's always up, so. <laughs> Me and you. <laughs> hey, go. Hey, go. Like a bad boy, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith, coach. <laughs> so that's another penalty on Jackson State. I think that's, that's four penalties on JSU so far here in the first quarter. All right, this is going to push Jackson State back to the Valley 34-yard line. First down and 15 for JSU. Hayes in the shotgun, takes the snap, has time. Now here comes the pressure. He steps up, and he's going to take off. He's inside the 30, inside the 20, and knocked down inside the 15, down to about the 14. It's another AARP first down on that run by Jared Hayes. Goes back to what you and I talked about last time, Coach. In this conference, in any conference now, all quarterbacks, most 99% of the time, have to be mobile if you want to be successful. Even if Alabama's going to a mobile quarterback, that should tell you something. So Jackson State inside the Stiefel investment first down, 11 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Hayes takes the snap, hands it to Jordan Johnson. Jordan angling to the right inside the 10, five, 
barreling his way down to the two-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds, and that will end the first quarter of play. Another flag, Coach. Now, it probably may be when, 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 when the ball, see his, hat, his helmet came off, he's supposed to stop. He can't continue to play. Okay, he had an offensive lineman, helmet came off. Defensive lineman. What do you call a, yeah. what do you call a personal foul penalty on Mississippi Valley? So this is going to push the ball near the goal line, maybe at the one-yard line. So yeah. unless uh, Coach Hughes decide to decline the penalty because it was already at the two. But, Coach, he can't help that his helmet popped off. But you, How do you call that? For safety reasons, you have to stop. He has to stop. He continued to pursue the player, and that's a well, he's he just a penalty. football player doing that, Coach. I don't understand that penalty. There's no more. This generation don't play with the leather helmets no more, Coach. Okay. You thinking about Unc back in the day. <laughs> Unc said he played with a leather helmet. Okay, there's no time on the clock, so they're going to run this play. It's first and goal for Jackson State at the one. Now, are they going to run this play? Or? I don't because think Because the first quarter end, is over. It can't end on a penalty, though. Okay. All right, first and goal for Jackson State. Hayes underneath center going with the quarterback sneak. They push him in, and they're going to say no signal yet. Touchdown. That's a good call, Coach. Ball on the on the one yard line. You needed one for the touchdown. The most logical thing to do was quarterback sneak. That's another Zaxby's touchdown for Jackson State, and the Tigers extend to a 13 to nothing lead. Let's check in now with Spencer McClinton. Is the storm down there? <laughs> I, I think Spence is down for a minute, Coach. Trying to get his mic fixed. Jock went on to attempt the point after. There's a kick, and it is good. Jackson State 14, Mississippi Valley nothing. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. impact we can have on the future is teaching our children to live healthy at home, at play, and at school. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi partners with our schools to support them in being places where our children learn about healthy habits and where they are empowered to achieve full academic potential. With the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi is building a healthy Mississippi. We start the second quarter of play. Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 14 to nothing. Salazar will kick it away as JSU will open the second quarter, moving the ball from right to left. It is a breezy Saturday afternoon, but not enough that will affect this ball game. JSU will be kicking with the wind at his back. And this is a good deep kick by Salazar into the end zone. Richie Automotive, check them out. Check out their new Volkswagen, Audi, Jaguar, and Land Rovers. Enjoy a true luxury dealership experience at Richie Automotive. And also find a higher quality of pre-owned cars when you visit Richie Automotive, 5320 I-55 North Frontage Road in Jackson. Log on to GoRitchie.com. All right, Coach, what's Vince Nancy doing, Coach? Well, Coach, if he has to find a way to get his offense going right now, Jackson State defense has just been too much for Mississippi Valley's offense. Um, so he has to find a way to get it going. I think we got Spence back ready to roll with us, Coach. All right, let's check in with Spence. Go ahead, Spence. Yeah, Rob, I, I, I missed the whole first half trying to figure out what's going on with this uh, mic and, and the headset. But um, so far, all I know is the score is 14-0. to Thank you there, Brother Smith. All right, on first down, Valley will go underneath. The catch is made. Ooh, boy. Mm, better he get was, down, Coach. Yeah, he better get down. 
He tried to spin out a tackle, and he was hit by three or four. Wow. Yeah, he better get down. And I mean quick. <laughs> they met him with bad intentions, Coach. Yeah, Coach. That was Darian, Darian Harper, the receiver for Mississippi Valley on the reception. He picked up three yards, tried to fight out of that tackle, but he was hit by three other players. So it is second down now for the Delta Devils from their own 27-yard line. Valley trails in this game, 14 to nothing. Quarterback will keep it, and he's brought down not much there at all. He may have lost a yard on the play, making the tackle for the Tigers. Who else? Eric Bowie. Eric Bowie, coach. I mean, I don't know what the flag could be. That's against Valley, though. Chop, look like chop blocking against Mississippi Valley. You can't, you can't go out and come back in and cut a guy. All right, that's on Harper, the wide receiver for Mississippi Valley out of Beaumont, Texas. They're going to push Valley all the way back, half the distance to the goal. Wow. And I tell you, Jackson State defense is turning it up now. When they stop them here and they have to punt, Coach, I would not be surprised if Coach Hughes dials up, you know, and go after that one because it's just a matter of time before they block this punt. The punt is real slow. The ball is coming Valley. back there real slow as well. To Jarek Bryant, the quarterback, back to throw, now steps up in the pocket. He's going to do more running than throwing, and he's dragged down after taking it to the 15. So a pickup of one, so Valley facing third down and very long. Third, they, you know, you don't really want to get your team in second and long and third and long, and throughout this game, Valley has been in third and long situations. Uh-oh, look, they're playing on the jumbo truck. Yeah, I see. Uh, I'm trying not to look down good. Down. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's third down. Valley at its own 15-yard line. They can pick up the first down at the 35. Bryant, the quarterback in the shotgun for the Delta Devils, takes a snap, swings it out to the left side. The catch is made by Chambers, and he's going to be forced out of bounds. So Jackson State did shut him down, Coach. They did, Coach, and I expect Coach U probably to go after this one because the, the, the reaction between the center and the punter time is real slow. So I, I expect Coach probably to go after this one. All right, so Jackson State with three block kicks a week ago, which set a school record. Back to punt for Mississippi Valley. Justin Reed. Warren Newman back at his 45-yard line. Nice crowd here for this homecoming 2018 there, Coach. Yeah, it is, Coach. There's a snap. Jackson State tried to get it. Was, they tried to get it, it Coach. Like it may affect him because it's a short kick. Yeah. Somebody stuck a hand out there. Yeah. So JSU will start in excellent field position at midfield. And, and that's something that we have not seen in, in the previous ball game. But I tell you, we just got the stats real quick, Coach. The most important stat that stands out right now is third down conversion. This is the first time Jackson State four or five third down conversions since the season has started, Coach. Wow. Fantastic. That tells you what Coach McCall is doing. First down for Jackson State. Just shy of midfield at its own 47-yard line. Hayes remains in at quarterback for the Tigers. Jackson State operating from right to left. 12-22 to go here in the second quarter. They give it to Porter. He tries to angle to his right. He lost two yards back to the 45-yard line. Yeah, he's going to have to put his foot in the ground. Coach, they just strung him out, strung him out. At some point in time, he's going to have to put his foot in the ground and get vertical and get behind those shoulder pads. Keyshawn Harper, the sophomore the from Mobile, Alabama, on the carry. Coming into the ball game now for Jackson State is Javon Brown, a 5'9 running back, senior out of Mount Bellevue, Texas. So you got Hayes again back in the shotgun here on second down and about 12. Hayes takes a snap. Here comes the Delta Devils defense. Hayes throws it underneath. The catch is made as Harper is brought down after maybe a gain of a yard. He may have lost another yard on that play, Coach. Yeah, he did, Coach. And, and I saw what Hayes wanted, the two deep balls, but it looked like there was a blow, a busted route because you had two people in the same area. So somebody may have just misread the wrong route right there. 
Yeah, Hayes rolled to his left. Valley was coming at him, and he had to dump it out. I tell you what, Valley is, is, is really trying to bring pressure. I mean, they're, they're not just sitting back now. Third down and 13, Jackson State at its own 44. Hayes back to throw, steps up in the pocket. Now he's in trouble, and he is going to be brought down. A sack back at the 31-yard line by the Delta Devils and a loss of seven on the play. Yeah, that was, they just brought pressure right there, and he kind of got caught up, didn't know which way he wanted to go, but the pressure, initial pressure is what set the tone for him. On the sack for the Delta Devils, Jerry Garner, the junior from Chanchula, Alabama. You ever been there? Chanchula. No, sir, I haven't. Cool. Okay. So Jackson State's going to have to punt it away. Great defensive effort by Mississippi Valley. Chambers standing back at his own 13, maybe the 17 for Mississippi Valley. Valley coming after it. There's a punt by Jockman. It's a good kick driving Chambers all the way back to the seven-yard line. He spins around, and he's headed up field, and he's still on his feet at the 19 and is brought down, and that's where Valley will start at the 19-yard line. 9.54 to go in the second quarter. Jackson State 14, Valley nothing. We're back after this on the Tigers Sports Network. Jackson State University football brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield, AARP of Mississippi, and Zaxby's. 9.54 to go here in the second quarter. Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 14 to nothing. Jackson State football brought to you in part by Kimelon Campbell. She's running for Hines County Circuit Court Judge, Sub-District 2. Kimelon has practiced law for 20 years. She's an assistant district attorney, prosecuting murders, armed robbers, robberies rather, and armed carjackers. She is committed to public safety and community development. Kimelon will diligently keep the community safe, increase the quality of life in Hines County, and administer justice firmly and fairly. Get out and vote November 6th. First down and 10 for the Delta Devils. Another swing pass out to the right side. The catch is made, and a, what a uh, tackle. What a tackle. I mean, he, he was already engaged with a Gladney, defender Coach. that was Gladney, and he wow. made the tackle in the process. How did he do that, Coach? Coach, he, he took the inside, outside shoulder and drove the receiver back into his man, and then he made the tackle. That's a great job. Second down and 10 for the Delta Devils. Bryant remains in at quarterback for Mississippi Valley. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and he's going to be brought down. No gain on the play for Mississippi Valley at the 20-yard line. Yeah, Valley, Valley's having some serious issues right now because they're minus 11 yards rushing, 7 yards passing, zero first downs in the first, half, first quarter. Wow. Third down and 10 for the Delta Devils from their own 20-yard line, operating from left to right. Under nine minutes to go here in the second quarter. Here comes Jackson State to Bryant. Bryant rolls. He's flushed out of the pocket, throws deep down the right side. It is caught. Wow. Wow, he was on two defenders. Did he make the catch inbounds? Here we go right here on the replay, Rob. Okay, the officials say he did make the catch inbounds. Now, we're looking at a replay here, and yeah, he did. Yeah, he's in. He cool. did. What a catch yeah, he's in. by McElfridge. He must have heard you talking about it. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he heard you. First down for the Delta Devils. They're going to look at it, Coach. 
All right. Yeah, if they see what we saw, they'll see that he made the catch. Let's check in with Spencer McClinton. What you got, man? Defenders there when the ball was thrown, and it, it, it's a wonder that he even was able to even get with the two Jackson State defenders right on him. But after he caught it, I'm not sure if he was able to get a foot down because they both uh, ran into him, so he may have caught it but landed out of bounds. He, it's meant he not only had one foot inbound, he had two feet inbound. If he had a third foot, that would have been inbound. Wow. Yeah, we look at it up here. Seeing. Yeah, but what we're seeing, that was a great catch by that young man. Yeah. To have the presence of mind of keeping his feet inbound there, Coach. Yeah, he's a good athlete. Coach. Yeah. He's a very good athlete. You know, and I tell you what, Mississippi Valley doesn't, body-wise, they don't look bad, Coach. They're just, you know, they're not as big as Jackson State, but I can see what. Oh, okay. Now, when we look at it again, it looked like it's, it looked like his toe may have been inbounds and the heel was out of bounds, but. Well, it looked like the official that's running the clock finally slowed it down the right way. Okay. <laughs> so the officials are still waiting to see if McElfresh was inbounds or out of bounds. Can now, from what we saw, it looked like he was inbound. That's what it looked like. Now, does the whole foot have to land inbound or just part of it? Does it his uh, tippy toe landed in bounds, but the heel was out of bounds. That's a good question. <laughs> I would think the whole foot, Coach. You think the whole foot? I would think the whole foot. And he also had the presence of mind of holding on to the football. Yeah, he did a good job. Now, his second foot landed in bounds, but the uh, issue is if McElfrey's foot came down in bounds, the official still talking it over. Nice crowd here for homecoming 2018. Boy, it's a nice crowd here, Coach. Yeah, it is, Coach. Jackson State, again, among the FCS teams leading in attendance across the country. Coach, did you hear about uh, Cornell Maynard getting fired? No, absolutely not. Yeah, From Alabama A&M? Yeah. What he, did he do, Coach? At his uh, press conference, he rapped about the Texas Southern players, how fat they were. Oh, I saw that. That, yeah, that brings a fine? Yeah, you can't talk about these kids like that. Right? Oh, okay. I thought he was just rapping about something. No, he was talking about those kids. I mean, you know, as head coaches, you still got to keep it professional, you know? Because they're kids at the end of the day. Keep your personal feelings to yourself. All right, the official still talking it over down there, Coach. A breezy Saturday afternoon, but it feels good out here, man. It does, Coach. Beautiful day. Jackson State returns to this stadium next week to play North Alabama. That's going to be a good one. You know, North Alabama was a powerhouse in Division II football, yeah. and they moved up to Division Subdivision 1A. And they already beat uh, Alabama State this year. Yes. They're pretty good, Coach. I think they're going to say it was incomplete there, Coach. Well, if they cannot verify it here on the replay, they're going to have to go ahead and go with the ruling on the field. It should not take this long to make the decision, though. But I guess they want to make sure it's the right call. Wow, well, they say it was incomplete. They're going to say his foot was out of bounds, so... I guess I'm 0 for 1 on that, Coach. I thought he came down with his feet inbound. Yeah, uh, that's a good job by the, uh, the replay uh, group the officials up in the booth. <laughs> so Warren Newman will field this punt for Jackson State. It's a short kick by the Delta Devils. It's going to bounce at the 30. Newman thought about picking it up. And that's where it will bounce, and JSU will start from the 25. 8.18 to go in the second quarter. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. It's another fun day at the Brown Home. Cindy and Tasha are busy playing outside and acting like they own the world. Their mom, Whitney, is watching them, thinking how wonderful it is to see them having such a great time. But it wasn't too long ago that this happy play party would have ended too soon. Before Whitney joined Hope Credit Union, she would have to load the kids into the van and head to the branch to do her banking. But since joining Hope, 
she can do almost all of her banking from anywhere by using the free Hope Mobile app. Now she can make deposits by simply taking a picture on her smartphone. She can check her balances, transfer funds, and even pay her bills. It's so convenient. And today, instead of that long drive to the branch, Cindy, Tasha, and Whitney can enjoy their time together doing something fun. Why not make your life more enjoyable? Call 800-284-1363 to join Hope Credit Union today and download the mobile app. Remember, it's free. Hope Credit Union. Better banking, better lives. Federally insured by NCUA Equal Housing Lender. First down for Jackson State from his own 26-yard line. The Tigers operate from right to left. Hayes remains in at quarterback. Gives it to Jordan Johnson. Johnson is wrapped up as soon as he gets the handoff. Pick up about one yard to the 27-yard line. Well, they give him three yards to the 29. That's that, that tough running, Coach. He got behind the shoulder pad. But I think the cutback is what gave him the yards when he made the cutback. Second down and seven now for Jackson State. The Tigers lead it 14 to nothing, under eight to go here in the second quarter. Rob J., Darrell Asbury, Spencer McClinty, and Sam Brown bring you the play-by-play -play story here on a beautiful Saturday in Jackson. Again, Jackson State with the ground game. That's Johnson up the middle as he takes it to about the 35-yard line. Jackson State just running a short trap right there. And they're, they're trapping that three technique. Pulling around, blocking it. Good job of George hitting it right up the seam. Jackson State now facing a third down and two from its own 34-yard line. Two receivers in the game, stretched out wide, one to the right, one to the left. Two backs in the backfield. They'll hand it off. And look at him go. This is Jordan Johnson. Again, Johnson across midfield into Valley territory before being pushed out of bounds on the near side at the Delta Devils 41-yard line. Coach, he does a great job of pressing that lead. The hole closed inside, and he did a great job of just bouncing it outside. He has great, tremendous vision. That's another AARP first down for Jackson State as the Tigers continue to move into Valley territory. Under seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Jordan Johnson, the lone set back in the backfield. He's standing next to Jared Hayes, who's back in the shotgun. There's a snap. He gives it to Johnson again, and this time he is caught after a pickup of a yard on the play. Yeah, they just came back and ran that same play again, and, and, and Mississippi Valley just read it. This carry by Jordan Johnson. Zachary Gordon on the stop for Valley. Jordan Johnson comes out of the ball game for Jackson State. In the game for JSU is big old Quinton Brown. He ran over a defender <laughs> early in this, uh, actually in the first quarter. Big old offensive line for Jackson State. They've been doing a great job this season. They have, Coach. There's a snap. Hayes back to throw. He has time. Now rolls to his left. He's going to take off inside the 40, inside the 35, inside the 30, and pushed out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. There's another AARP first down for Jackson State. Good job. Good job right there by Hayes. Just getting behind those pads and running, Coach. I mean, nobody was out there. So that's a good job. You're supposed to take advantage of, of the opportunities. Jackson State at the Delta Devils, 28-yard line. Coming up on five minutes to go in the second quarter. Jackson State, 14. Mississippi Valley, nothing. But Jackson State looking to extend that lead. Hayes again in the shotgun on first and 10. Hayes swings it out to the left side. The catch is made. Uh, not much after that catch, though. No, it wasn't cold. And what the receiver has to understand when you get that ball, you catch it, you got to turn and get vertical and run. It's too much moving around, juking and juking. You got to catch it and go. Kenny Young on the reception for Jackson State. He caught a touchdown pass last week against Arkansas Pine Bluff. A pickup of two, making it second down and eight for JSU from the Delta Devils. 26-yard line. Jackson State again operating from right to left. Tigers in all blue. There's a snap. Hayes back to throw. He's in trouble again. Rolls to his left this time, and he is going to be brought down 
back at the 32-yard line, a sack of about four yards on the play. Yeah, that's what you call a coverage hey, sack. Stopped on the uh, play. No one was open that time. He made the smart decision not to force the ball in there, just get what he could get and get down. Big third down right here, Coach. Lord, she got his baby on this thing. If he, we're in open air here. He, he don't need to be that close to that. Oh, my goodness. Third down and 15 now for Jackson State from the Delta Devils, 33. Hayes takes a high snap, has time now, plenty of time. Fires across the middle. The catch is made down at the 16-yard line. It's enough for a first down. It's another AARP first down. Shoemaker on the reception for Jackson yeah, State. Yeah, that's a good job of him sitting down. They just ran a nice in route uh, to get the first down, but a great job of looking down the barrel right there, Coach. Jackson State inside the Stiefel Investment Red Zone. It is first down for JSU from the Delta Devils. 16-yard line. Coming up on three minutes to go here in the second quarter. Hayes again in the shotgun. You got Harper in the backfield with Jordan Johnson. There's a snap. They give it to Jordan Johnson. He's trying to go off that left tackle, and he is stopped. He loses some yards on the play. He's brought down by one, two, three, four Delta Devils. Yeah, but I saw Hayes trying to get Coach McCall's attention. He had one-on-one -on -one to the top with Shoemaker, and he wanted it. He wanted to check out of it, but Coach wouldn't let him. But that's the awareness of a great, of a good quarterback that can recognize the one-on-one. -on -one. My best receiver versus your defensive back one-on-one. -on -one. He has the confidence that his guys will win every time. Since the um, departure of Mummy, we have not seen much of um, – Derek Ponder, we won't. Second down, 15. They fake the handoff to Johnson. Hayes fires in the end zone. It is batted down. He was looking for Shoemake on the right side of the end zone, and it's incomplete. He had him, Coach. But Shoemake fell down on him right there, Coach. And see, when a quarterback has the confidence to want to come to you, you got to be up and make that play. But he slipped down, they'll get the next one. Back defending for Mississippi Valley, Dominique Shelton, the junior from Ventura, California. Third down and 15 for JSU. Hayes, the quarterback, in the shotgun. There's a man in motion to the right. Hayes swings it out to Benji Parrish, who makes the catch, takes it inside the 20, and is brought That's down near the original line of scrimmage. To Benji Parrish. They, just, they just, just threw it out to the side. I thought Hayes was going to try to push the ball up vertically, but they just threw it sideline to sideline. It, it's just a bunch of people just walking about, just standing over us, Coach, like we're not working. Oh, man, I, I don't I mean, get it. This guy, he just, he, he just standing almost like we're not working, Coach. I don't know, Coach. God. Hey, wait for me to shake his hand. No, this is the guy. You didn't see the other guy. This would be a 33-yard attempt from the right hash mark. There's a snap. Ball plays down. The kick is up, and it is good. Jockman with the field goal. That's sponsored by C Spire. Customer inspired. Jackson State extends to a 17-0 lead. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network.
A minute 34 to go. Jackson State with a 17-0 lead over Mississippi Valley State as the Tigers get set to kick it off. Salazar will be kicking away to Mississippi Valley State. His last kick went way out of the end zone. This one is going into the end zone, and Valley will go with the touchback. Jackson State University would like to thank its sponsors, premier sponsorship, Dr. Winston and Alma Pittman. Platinum sponsors, Mr. Haley and Mrs. Allison Fisackerly. Entergy as well. Diamond sponsors include AT&T, Bank Plus, C Spire Foundation, Howard Catchings Transamerica Life Insurance and Catchings Agency. Mr. Frederick and Mrs. Margaret Clark, Dr. Dyron and Mrs. Tarita B. Davis, Dr. Willie S. Farmer Sr. and Mrs. Tommy Esters Farmer, Mr. Mayo and Mrs. Renee Flint, Dr. Jimmy L. and Mrs. Gold B. Franklin, as well as Mr. David and Mrs. Jill Gates, Kelly Road Builders and Kelly Natural Gas Pipeline, Mr. Calvin and Mrs. June Hill, Dr. Averett and Mrs. Dalry Martin, Mr. Robert E. and Dr. Alexia M. Norwood, and Omega Psi Phi Grand Chapter. On first down and 10, Valley's pass is incomplete. They're starting from their own 25-yard line. And once again, Jackson State put pressure on that quarterback. He just had to rush the throw right there. Pass incomplete, second down and 10 for Valley. Delta Devils trailed 17 to nothing. They're looking for their first win of the year. They're coached by Vince Dancy, former JSU linebacker. He's in his first year as head coach at Mississippi Valley. New quarterback in the ball game for the Delta Devils. In at quarterback for Valley is Jeff Evan. Evan wears number seven for the Delta Devils. He's back in the shotgun on second down and 10. Jeff takes the snap, looking. Here comes the pressure. He's going to just throw it underneath. The catch is made, or do they say it was an incomplete pass? That ball looked like it hit the ground, Coach. Looked like he's going to give it to him. Well, we, have a, we have a replay up here now. We yeah. can check it out and see, Let's Coach. Let's see, Coach. Oh, that hit the that ground. Hit the ground, yeah. Coach. All right, but anyway, it's third down and one for the Delta Devils after that nine-yard pickup. 122 to go here in the second. Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 17 to nothing. Dancy calls a timeout. Let's give us an opportunity to take a look at the Hope Credit Union SWAC scoreboard update. In the second quarter, Alcorn is in Huntsville, Alabama, and they trade. Well, actually, they're tied with Alabama AM 3 to 3. Now Alcorn is leading 10 to 3 in the second quarter. Later this evening, Southern University is at Prairie View, and Grambling is at Texas Southern. We're going to take a break and come back on the Tiger Sports Network. There's a common misconception that all chicken sandwiches from the South are the same. Q Saxby's new Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC Chicken Sandwiches. The Southern Chicken Sandwich will never be the same. Introducing the all-new buttermilk and hand-breaded Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC Chicken Sandwiches. One has sweet pickles, lettuce, smoky backyard sauce, and a potato bun. The other a perfected classic with lettuce, tomato, and mayo. Order ahead on Zaxby's.com or use our app to skip the wait. Friends, family, flavor. Zaxby's. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi partners with businesses across the state to help them be places where people are encouraged to make healthy choices. With the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, we support you in the places you work every day. Because it's about you, your health, your life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy, live blue. It's good to be blue. We have a nice crowd here at homecoming 2018. Jackson State fans all smiles right now because the Tigers lead the Delta Devils 17 to nothing in the second quarter with a minute 22 to go. Even Sunday, the Tiger is on his feet dancing. Yeah, he is, Coach. Now, did Valley bring the Delta Devil mascot? Because Sonny owed him from last year. Yeah, but Sonny got whipped, Coach. <laughs> yeah, Sonny got to get him back. They whipped Sonny up and down the field. <laughs> Again, new quarterback for Mississippi Valley State, Jeff Evan. Oh, no, Coach. He may have made that catch. We were talking about that catch a moment ago. May have trapped it, but it looked like uh, he may have made that catch, Coach. But, but, but that's what Vince was fussing about, Coach. I don't know. Looks like it may have been a shadow on it. 
You know, did he trap it? Did he really? From what we see, uh, okay, what they're going to say, his knee was down right there. That's what I think that's what they're going to argue about. His knee was down right there at the 29-yard line. That was a good observation, Coach. But that's where they marked it at. Yard line, 58 seconds to go. Hayes remains in at quarterback for the Tigers. Jackson State with a 17 to nothing lead. Four man front for the Delta Devils. Jackson State keeping it on the ground here as they go up the middle. Harper on the carry, takes it across the 35 to the 36. The just running that inside zone or you're going to draw. I think coach is going to push it up the field. You have the momentum. You have a good, good lead. Go ahead and try to push it upfield. Tigers from the 37. They give it to Harper again, and he is stopped right at the 40-yard line as he takes it across it to the 39, and that is another AARP first down. Good job. Just punching it down the field. Coach Bowden will do a little play action at some point in time and try to get some points out of it. AARP of Mississippi first down. So Jackson State calls a timeout. We'll take one as well. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. Safeguarding the money of others as if it were our own. At Stiefel, it's their guiding principle. For more than 125 years, investors like you have trusted Stiefel to help them pursue their financial goals and leave a legacy for future generations. Stiefel, Nicholas & Company Incorporated, member NYSE and SIPC. Stiefel Investment Services, since 1890. 
There's a common misconception that all chicken sandwiches from the South are the same. Q Zaxby's new Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. The Southern Chicken Sandwich will never be the same. Introducing the all-new buttermilk and hand-breaded Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. One has sweet pickles, lettuce, smoky backyard sauce, and a potato bun. The other a perfected classic with lettuce, tomato, and mayo. Order ahead on Zaxby's.com or use our app to skip the wait. Friends, family, flavor. Zaxby's. First down and 10 for Jackson State from its own 40-yard line. Hayes swings it to Jared Johnson. Jordan Johnson, rather. Johnson takes it across the 40-yard line and pushed out of bounds on the near side at about the 44, a pickup of four yards on the play. Good job just trying to get it outside, you know, making good calls. At some point in time, I expect Coach maybe to take one shot, you know, not to jeopardize a whole lot. You have 17 points. 15 seconds. Yeah. So if, even if he took a shot here, it wouldn't hurt. All right. Hayes back to throw. Has plenty of time. Now steps up in the pocket. Rolls to his right. Nine seconds. Throws to Warren Newman, and he can fly. Newman at the 20, and he's brought down. Three seconds left. Down to two. And Jackson State will call a timeout. Probably could kick a field goal. Is he out of, is he out of Jockman's range, Coach? Salazar's range? No, this is Jockman's range. Jockman, this is what he's going to probably do. Go for a field goal. Yeah, Jockman, his longest has been 48, 49 yards. Yeah. So this will be in that range. Now, let me say this, Coach. Prior to Coach McCall taking over as offensive coordinator, mm -hmm. you know, it was no clock management. This was a great job of him managing the clock, understanding how many timeouts he had, knowing that I, either, I want to get him in field goal range. If I can get him in field goal range, we can just get points out of it. That's a great job of him and his offensive staff. This would be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash mark with the wind at Jockman's back. And when you get to this point as an offensive unit, you've done what we actually do, get us in scoring range. 47 yards. All right, Salazar will hold. Ronza Anderson will snap it. There's a snap ball placed down. The kick is up. It's high enough. It's long enough. It is good. Good job. Wow. Jockman extends the lead to 20 to nothing over Mississippi Valley. Let's check in now with Spencer McClinton. Yeah, Rob, we're trying to find Coach right now as the team is running off the field. Um, headed into the back for the uh, halftime break. We're going to talk to Coach for one second. Well, uh-oh. We moved the ball offensively. Defensively, I mean, of course, we got a shutout at halftime, so it's a it's a, um, a major job, good job by our defense, and good job by the kicking game. So we still hadn't complete put together a whole half yet this year, and we're gonna challenge ourselves this Thanks. half to play the best half we played all year. Back to you, Roger Wicker. All right, Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley. 20 to nothing. We're going to take a break and come back with halftime festivities after this on the Tiger Sports Network. No.
Back at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium, Jackson State leading the Delta Devils at the half, 20 to nothing. Looking at some of the halftime stats here, Coach. Jackson State dominating Mississippi Valley. JSU, 153 yards rushing. Valley with minus nine. Wow. Wow, Coach. Valley can't seem to get it going offensively. And you and I both know when you can't get it going offensively, Coach, it's going to be a long day. JSU with 87 yards passing, Mississippi Valley with 20 yards passing, and uh, one of your pet peeves of third down conversions, Jackson State 6 of 9, Valley has not converted on third down in this ball game. Well, we know what kind of night it's going to be, Coach. When you can't convert, this fellow been eating since we <laughs> Willie, he must, he must have eaten last night. Last night? He must have ate yeah, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we'd like to thank Zaxby's for sponsoring our halftime uh, half treats. Yeah, so we want to thank Zaxby yeah. for that. But uh, Jordan Johnson with 77 yards rushing. Jared Hayes, 87 yards passing. He's been sacked once. Shoemake leading in receiving with 32 yards. Jockman with a 53-yard average, and he just booted a 47-yard field goal to give Jackson State a 20 to nothing lead over Mississippi Valley. All right, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back as a sonic boom. Actually, the Valley State green, mean green marching machine is getting set to hit the field. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. JSU welcomes Porter's Insurance as a proud sponsor of JSU Athletics. For all of your insurance needs, turn to a friend indeed. Porter's Insurance, located at 1020 University Boulevard, formerly known as Terry Road, offers protection coverage for all of your needs. Porter's has affordable comprehensive coverage for your home, car, life, health, and accident and commercial business needs. Learn more about Porter's Insurance at portersinsurance.com. Porter's Insurance and JSU, partners in our community. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi partners with our communities to promote living healthy. With the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, we're empowering you to take control of your personal wellness journey and to find the joy of being active at every age and helping you build proud, healthy communities with a heart of hospitality because it's about you, your health, your life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. Welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Jackson State leading the Delta Devils. 20 to nothing here at the half. Getting set to hit the field. The mean green marching machine of Mississippi Valley State. And I'm so happy to have with me right now the mayor of the city of Jackson, Mayor Chokwe Antalamuma, joining us here at the half. Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're busy today. Yeah, how you uh, doing? I don't have nothing on my mouth. <laughs> no, we're up here with the Zach. Yeah, you look like you're enjoying it. <laughs> so, Mayor, how's everything going so far? Everything's going well. I'm happy to see Jackson State is up. They're, they're doing a good job. Uh, you know, I'm... You know, when it when it comes to the revenue and everything that the homecoming brings, I'm I'm the number one Jackson State fan. So, and things are looking good. Uh, people have come out to the city, happy to see people come back home. And and, and this is a beautiful day for this football game. And I know when Jackson State is winning, that helps out the city as well. Absolutely, absolutely. We couldn't ask for a better day. Uh, you know, I've shared with uh, the new. Uh, athletic director that I'm willing to do anything that we can from the city standpoint to help them be successful to to get the games in the city that we'd like to see. Absolutely. So I'm happy to see everybody out today. So Mayor, any any new things, any new project? You're always um, doing things, uh, you know, you, you have your, your, your thumb on the pulse of, of, of new and in, inventive and innovative things. Anything new you yeah. got coming? Well, we have a, we have a few things. Uh, I think that the thing that would probably uh, excite people the most is that we have a series of uh, streets to be repaved uh, starting in November. Uh, and, and we're working to go ahead and get the uh, Hines County Interlocal Agreements uh, executed, with which uh, will pave nearly 100 streets within the city. 
And so that's, that's the uh, primary thing that I, I know people are interested in. But there's a number of things that we're trying to push. We're, we're building three solar farms uh, to try to, to uh, reduce our, our emissions and, and uh, become a more, uh, build the future of Jackson today. And so uh, we're, we're building one of the fastest municipal broadband networks in the nation, and that will help solicit new businesses. We've been talking to businesses as far away as Silicon Valley about relocating to Jackson uh, based on that, that network. And so there, there are a number of exciting things going on. Absolutely. Yeah. We're talking with Jackson Mayor Chokwe and Talamumba as uh, we are at the half. Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 20 to nothing. Mayor, uh, any, any, any traveling that you have coming up soon? Uh, I'll, I'll be going uh, a few places. I'll be going to Miami uh, soon for uh, this Institute of Design, which uh, is basically talking about large projects the cities have across the country. Uh, there's a few cities that are selected into this process, and it, it really talks about some best-case scenarios of how we bring things into fruition. The project that we're looking at is Ferris Street and how we get Ferris Street going. That is, that is critically important to me. I know it's critically important to the citizens of Jackson, and I think that the, uh, for, for the, entire, uh, the, the entire atmosphere of downtown to succeed, we need Ferris Street to thrive. Absolutely. And I know you got your eye on Tuskegee. Man, how Absolutely. They doing? How they doing? <laughs> you know, Tuskegee isn't doing too bad. We, we lost to two of our rivals this year, and, and, and you know, that hurt me deeply. We lost to Alabama State, and, and we lost to Morehouse. Uh, we hadn't lost to either one of them in about a decade, so, I, so I felt the sting of that. Yeah, so, there must, be, must yeah. be a few hard times yeah, with Tuskegee yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah, well, well they're, they're still in the hunt uh, for, for their, their conference championship, but uh, – you know, that, that one doesn't feel good when you lose to those rivals. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I know today you're going to be uh, shaking your blue and white pom-pom. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm all the way Jackson State today. And so long as we don't have that, that crimson and gold on the, on the field with Jackson State, then I'm all right. <laughs> well, Mayor, you're doing a wonderful job, man, in the I city. Agree. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people notice that, that the things that you're doing, and, um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. People are always talking about the potholes here and all of that, but they are getting repaired. Yeah, well, I – well, no, I appreciate uh, people uplifting me. Uh, I appreciate uh, people's patience. And, and we won't get there in a moment, but we're certainly on our way uh, to changing this city. And I'm, I'm truly excited about this moment. Yes, sir. Well, yeah. we really appreciate you stopping by at halftime. I know you're very, very busy. you got a busy schedule, but thank you so much for joining us. No, I appreciate you letting yes, me sir. come talk to you. Oh, All yes, right. sir, anytime. It's a good uh, view up here. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. All right, that's Mayor Chokwe Antalamumba, the mayor of the city of Jackson. When we come back, we'll hear from the Jackson State Marching Band, the Sonic Boom of the South, after this on the Tiger Sports Network. So you haven't washed your lucky socks since that fourth quarter comeback five years ago. At C Spire, we get it. You'll do anything to help your team win, just like anything we do is inspired by you. We're your biggest fan, lucky socks and all. From business to home to wireless, our inspiration is always you. C Spire, customer inspired. Switch and save up to $500 on our best phones with trade-in. Details at cspire.com. At the half, Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 20 to nothing. And JSU, the last time they were in this stadium, led Alabama AM 16 to nothing before that lead evaporated. Can JSU hold on to this lead? Coach, you know, I think they may have learned their lesson. You know, because they said they yeah. took their foot off the throat of Alabama AM and they couldn't afford to do that. So I, don't, I think, you know, they will not let off the gas against Valley. Well, I think the difference is it's Coach McCall, coach. I can't say it enough. Um, I don't think Coach Mummy understood the, 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 the magnitude of Jackson State football. Coach McCall does, and, and, you know, he'll continue to keep his foot down on him. He knows what to do, and he understands the rich tradition that Jackson State has. All right, at the half, Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 20 to nothing. We're going to take another break and come back with more on the Tiger Sports Network.
should be. Welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium at the half. Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 20 to nothing. Rob J. Daryl Asbury bringing you the play-by-play -play story on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. It is homecoming 2018, Coach, and so far so good for JSU. It is, Coach, and I'm very excited. You know, I can't go back enough to talk about those third-down conversions, Coach. Six for nine, I think that's great from where we came from. Um, again, offensively, we're doing a good job. Defensively, we're shutting them out. Winning the kicking game, I can't see this game shifting any direction, but a great sweet homecoming victory. Absolutely. On the field right now is the Sonic Boom of the South marching band. In just a moment, we're going to pause to listen to the Sonic Boom. But uh, what can Jackson State do, Coach, to maintain this lead and get out of here with a victory? They just can't let up. They just have to continue to go in like a 0-0, come back out, continue to play solid football all the way around in three phases of the game. When you look at uh, homecoming activities and all of that, as a player, when you played here or when you coached here, how do you keep away from distractions or want to look at the halftime show? Well, it, it's always a distraction on homecoming week. I just got out of one with my high school. Major distraction. We started off very flat. Jackson State started off strong. So that tells me Coach Hughes did a good job of keeping his guys grounded, understanding what this game really meant. Absolutely, Coach. So Jackson State leading 20 to nothing. At the half, again, the Sonic Boom of the South marching, uh, Sonic Boom of the South marching band on the field for Jackson State doing the famous Tiger run on. They have the alumni uh, members of the Jackson State Sonic Boom, so we are going to take a listen to the Sonic Boom of the South marching band.
between two sets. Time. Our score, Jackson State University 20, Mississippi Valley 0. We'll be back in one minute on the Tiger Sports Network. Rachel and Bobby are proud parents. Their 21-year-old daughter, Shelly, is the first to graduate from college in their family. What an accomplishment. This special moment requires a special gift. They've both been working two jobs to buy Shelly a car to show how proud they are of her. But they needed financing, so they joined Hope Credit Union. Rachel and Bobby were amazed at the way they were treated from the moment they walked through the doors. The friendly staff at Hope Credit Union took time to find an affordable loan solution for them that directly met their needs. They got such great member service and solid advice that Rachel is going back to Hope for a loan to make some home improvements. Apply for a loan with Hope Credit Union today. To learn more, call 800-284-1363. 800-284-1363. Or visit hopecu.org. Hope Credit Union. Better banking, better lives. Federally insured by NCUA Equal Housing Lender. And welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium, Jackson State, leading Mississippi Valley at the half, 20 to nothing. Eric Bowie leading the way in tackles for JSU. He has two unassisted tackles here at the half. Okay, I have the first half set. I know he has way more than that, Coach. Okay, let's see. Who are we talking about there, Eric Coach? Bowie. Bowie. Okay, Bowie, of course, he has two tackles. Keontre Hampton with two unassisted. And McCurl Gladney with two. Khalil Johnson with one tackle in this ball game for Jackson State. All right, the Sonic Boom continues to perform at the half. We're going to come back with more of the halftime show after the break on the Tigers Sports Network.
at the half. Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 20 to nothing. The sonic boom of the South Marching Band finishing up their routine on the field right now. We're going to take another break and come back with more after this on the Tiger Sports Network. I was just devastated, but it happened so fast, and I was literally in shock. I really didn't know what to do. A friend of mine had used Richard once before. If you need to call somebody, make sure you call Richard Swartz because they're going to be on their job. Don't hesitate. Call Richard Swartz. I'm attorney Richard Schwartz. I work just as hard for you. I won't settle for $1 less than you deserve. Call 601 and all eight. Free background information is available upon request. Richard Schwartz and Associates, one call, that's all. There's a common misconception that all chicken sandwiches from the South are the same. Q Saxby's new Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. The Southern Chicken Sandwich will never be the same. Introducing the all-new buttermilk and hand-breaded Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. One has sweet pickles, lettuce, smoky backyard sauce, and a potato bun. The other a perfected classic with lettuce, tomato, and mayo. Order ahead on Zaxby's.com or use our app to skip the wait. Friends, family, flavor. Zaxby's. And welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley at the half. Let's take a look now at your Hope Credit Union SWAC scoreboard update. Alcorn and Alabama A&M all tied at 10 at the half. A little bit later this evening, Alabama State is at South Alabama. Southern University is at Prairie View around uh, 4 o'clock this evening. And Grambling is at Texas Southern tonight as well. And your thoughts on that one, Coach? That's your old team there, old Texas Southern. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Coach, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I know you still I know you still got some love for them, Coach. <laughs> coach, I, I mean, Coach, they were, they were good to me and my family, Coach. I always, I always say that. They were good. And, you know, my hat's off to my former boss. He's the commissioner now, Dr. Charles McCullough. And he was at the inauguration. Yes. The other night. Yeah, coach, you know, he's he, a good guy, man. He he's is, man. Coach. He is that. He, you know, when, when, you know, I always say this, if you find somebody that loves family and you can work for them, you want to try to hold on to them. All right, we start the third quarter now. And it's a short kick fielded at the five by the Delta Devils up to the 20, 25. And he's still on his feet. Now Chambers is knocked down at the 31 this yard line. 14.53 to go. We're going to take a break and come back with Valley's opening possession of the third quarter after this on the Tiger Sports Network. as we start the third quarter. Valley moving the ball very swiftly against Jackson State's defense here on these first two plays as they've taken it from the 30. Now to the Jackson State 42-yard line. This new quarterback in the game, Jeff Evan, is putting it right there in the pocket there, Coach. He is, Coach. I was, that's why I gave you that look. I, I'm, I'm surprised to see Valley come out. What they're doing, they're starting to move the pocket because they know they can't afford to allow their quarterbacks to sit back in the pocket because of the pressure from Jackson State's defensive line. First down for Mississippi Valley from the Jackson State 39-yard line. Valley operating from right to left. Evan, low snap. He had to fall on the football. And so he's going to lose about seven yards back to the 46. Sometimes that nose guard will give that center those kind of problems to make that football get snapped low like that. 
you know, dealing with Jackson State front three or front four, whichever coach chooses to go to, you know, they're, they're just dominant up front. Second down for Mississippi Valley from the Jackson State 46-yard line. It is second down and 17 for the Delta Devils. They trail 20 to nothing here in the third quarter. Jeff Evan back to throw. Hit as he throws. The catch is made along the right sideline. Uh, pick up a maybe four yards. Going to bring up third and long for the Delta Devils. Yeah, Eric Bowie on the, on, the, on the hit after the ball was thrown. I mean, he really let the quarterback know that he was back there. The third down for Mississippi Valley from the JSU 44-yard line. Jeff Evan, the quarterback, he has four receivers in the game. Two to the right, two to the left. Three-man front for Jackson State. And we have a flag down before the snap of the football. This is going to be a false start against Mississippi Valley. That's Mr. Lofton on that side, that right tackle. I can tell you what, Valley's, you know, is, is Danzy's doing a good job of, of team discipline, Coach. When you when you go back and look at the, you know, the team from last year was kind of sporadic at times, should I say. But, um, <laughs> you mean, three penalties in the first half, Coach. I mean. That's, that's really good for that's Valley good, playing coach. against Jackson State. Yeah, and for a young head football coach, that's real good. All right, here on third and long, Evan steps up in the pocket, throws. It is batted down. Batted down at the 20-yard line, almost intercepted by Jackson State. Okay, you I want C.J. Holmes playing a pretty good game he today, is, coach. coach. Evan's had a lot of green grass in front of him, but he, he probably thought, of, thought about you. At, would you run? And he said, no, Rob wouldn't run. No. no. Mm -mm. You get out. If they holler, fire, fire, I ain't running. <laughs> Say that right now. Nobody hitting so me, Coach. you're not going to run like I'm afraid of heights. Mm -mm, that's exactly right. <laughs> so Valley will punt this away after a great job by the Jackson State defense. They drove it all the way to the JSU 40, and that's where the drive stalled. Jackson State has not blocked a kick yet this game. Oh, this is a good kick. It's going to bounce out of bounds at the three-yard line. 12.03 to go in the third. We're back after this. Jackson State leading 20 to nothing. This is the Tigers Sports Network. Circuits deliver power by making connections. At Entergy, we believe that works for people, too. The next generation is our connection to the future. So every year, Entergy invests millions of dollars in education to teach skills for better jobs, to build a brighter path. To us, making connections means more than electricity. It means fulfilling promise. And together, we power life. Energy. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi partners with businesses across the state to help them be places where people are encouraged to make healthy choices. With the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, we support you in the places you work every day. Because it's about you, your health, your life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy, live blue. It's good to be blue. On first down, Jackson State from its own four-yard line. They'll go with the running game and pick up about two yards. They keep it on the ground here. Jordan Johnson spinning out of tackles and knocked down after picking up two more yards near the 10-yard line. It's going to be third down and about five now for the Tigers. Game, yep. Coach McCall is just running that power to the outside line, that big offensive lineman pulling around. Jordan just following up in there, Coach. Mississippi Valley has stacked the box. Now, Coach is spreading them back out here. Well, hopefully they won't jam the box. <laughs> Third down and seven. There's a high snap. Throws out to Newman, and he is near the line oh, of the game, but he's going to be pushed out of bounds in a bad spot. Today. That's a bad spot. They put him about a yard and a half. Yeah. Look like but Newman had the first down. Yeah, can Tigers. you challenge the spot, though? Can Coach Hughes challenge the spot? I don't know if he can or not. I, I'm not I'm, I won't make that call. You know. You can in the NFL. Oh, he yeah, has the first down. Yeah, he has the first down. Yeah, first down. Coach. So it's going to be fourth down and one. And Jockman will punt it from his own end zone. Chambers backfielding for Mississippi Valley, standing at the 40. So Valley will get good field position from this. Fourth and one. 
High snap. Jacqueline's kick. It's a short kick. And it's going to roll out of bounds at the Jackson State 44-yard line. 10-21 to go in the third. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. Mississippi Valley starting at the Jackson State 44-yard line on first down. That pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. It's second down and 10 for the Delta Devils. Jeff Evan remains in at quarterback for the Delta Devils. Takes the snap. Throws along the left side. It is incomplete. Looking to get it to Booker Chambers. And this time Booker trapped it. Valley in their gray jerseys with the green numbers trimmed in red. They have the word Valley along the side of the pants. <laughs> My question is, where is Mississippi Valley, Rob J? Itty bitty Mississippi. <laughs> and you know, a, a, a lot of people ask, why do you, when you say Mississippi Valley, you say it Mississippi? Well, I got that from Clay, Claiborne Davis, the late Claiborne Davis, the longtime PA announcer at Mississippi Valley. So I just try to keep that going in his honor. Here on second down, that pass is incomplete. On third down, rather, that pass is incomplete by Evan. He was trying to get it to McElfresh. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Valley again, three and out. I'll tell you, that was a good spot for the quarterback to throw it. But that receiver did a little alligator on me, Coach, because he saw that safety beaming in, and he had somebody behind him as well. Now, will Valley go for it, or will they punt it, or will they kick a field goal? They'll, they'll punt it, Coach. It's, he still has a little time. But he has to get something going if he plans on making any push in this game. Jack State defense is just dominating them right now. Newman is a very dangerous return man. He turned one. He returned one for a touchdown in the first half, but a penalty brought it back, and this kick is going to bounce in the end zone for a touchback. 9.57 to go. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. I was just devastated, but it happened so fast, and I was literally in shock. I really didn't know what to do. A friend of mine had used Richard once before. If you need to call somebody, make sure you call Richard Swartz because they're going to be on their job. Don't hesitate. Call Richard Swartz. I'm attorney Richard Schwartz. I'll work just as hard for you. I won't settle for $1 less than you deserve. Call 601-9 and all eight. Free background information is available upon request. Richard Swartz and Associates. One call. That's all. for caregivers and push for the issues that matter to you and your family or just connect with them at exciting local events and volunteer opportunities. Let's take on today and everyday Tiger fans. Learn more at aarp.org slash ms. Nine twenty-five to go here in the third Jackson State starting from its own 20 yard line on first down. They lose two yards back to the 18. It is second down and 12 now for the Tigers. They hand it to Jordan Johnson. Jordan off that left side as he is brought down, maybe picking up a yard. So Valley's defense starting to stiffen up here in the third, Coach. Yeah, they are. Coach Jordan hadn't, hadn't gotten going this third quarter uh, just of yet. Second half just Third and 11 for the Tigers. Third down and 11 for Jackson State. The Tigers operating from left to right. They're in their blue jerseys, white numbers. Red socks, red uh, elbow pads, red wristbands, and, of course, the blue helmets with the familiar JSU block logo. 
Jared Hayes, the quarterback, in the shotgun on third down and 11. Jackson State from its own 19. Hayes back to throw, has time, throws across the middle. The catch is made. Okay, this guy next to me is going to have to go. He's going to have to move. Come on now. What's wrong with it? Oh, he's knocking stuff off. Okay, never mind. It is fourth down now for Jackson State. You want me to move him, Coach? I can get him moved, Coach. <laughs> so Jackson State's going to have to punt it. I've never seen any broadcast where people don't know what we're doing up here. Yeah, really. All right, Jockman gets it away, falls down on the kick. It's a nice kick driving Chambers back to the 31-yard line, and Chambers up to the 40 and drop down at the 44-yard line. 7.41 to go here in the third quarter. Portions of today's game brought to you by Kimelon Campbell, running for Hines County Circuit Court Judge, Sub-District 2. Kimelon has practiced law for 20 years. She's an assistant district attorney, prosecuting murders, armed robberies, armed carjackings. She is committed to public safety and community development. Kimelon Campbell will work diligently to keep our community safe, increase the quality of life in Hines County, and administer justice firmly and fairly. Get out and vote November 6th. 7.41 to go there, Coach, in the third quarter. Yeah, Coach, it's a, it's a beautiful day, man. I'm just enjoying this atmosphere. I know the, the people in the stands are enjoying it. I mean, it's a great football game as well. Not much scoring here in the third quarter. Valley first and 10 from its own 45. They've had great field position to start here in the second half. Now they go with the run up the middle, pick up a five yards to midfield. Yeah, they've, they, they've been trying that play all night, Coach, and the most they've pretty much gained on is five yards. It, it hasn't on. bust open like they wanted to because Jack State defense is just playing such, you know, good defense right now. Jeff Evan, the quarterback, the senior from Portland, Oregon. He came here to Mississippi Valley highly touted out of Portland, Oregon. On second down and five, he'll swing it out to McElfresh, who makes the catch near the first down marker. And they are going to mark it right at the line to gain. So this could be a first down. What are they going to say? Third? Well, the ball is right at the. Okay, now they're going to say it's a first down. Well, I'll tell you what. Arrington came up and really put the, laid the lick on him, Coach. I mean, he caught the ball, but he, he came up and did a great fundamental tackle. John Derrick Smith in the backfield with Evan. Now we have a change of quarterbacks for the Delta Devils. DeJerick Bryant back in the game for Mississippi Valley. First down and 10, Delta Devils at Jackson State's 45-yard line. They lose the football and a sack back at the 43-yard line. Now that's his second fumble, Coach. That quarterback there is like he doesn't want to keep his eyes on the ball, and Jackson State is not letting up. Well, he's not going to keep his eyes on the ball for long because Vince just took him out. <laughs> so he was in the all of one play, and here comes Evan once again. It's second down and 14 for Mississippi Valley. Second and 18, rather. Evan throws along the right sideline to McElfresh, who makes the catch. It's a pickup of about 12 yards. Number 81, Quinn McElfresh. So it's going to bring up third down and about five for the Delta Devils. Just playing just zone coverage right there, and they came up and made the play. Jack State has left the three-man defense and gone to the 4-2 or either 4-1 defense now. Valley at the Jackson State 38-yard line on third down and about three. Okay, now you have uh, Vince is switching out quarterbacks, man. That's Bryant as he hands it off. That uh, pickup was, it's going to be a yard short of the first down. They just ran the zone yard short. He's going to go for it right here, Coach. If he wants to have any chance of getting back in this game. Now, Valley went for it on fourth and one earlier in the game and did not get it. So it's Jackson State 20, Mississippi Valley nothing. 
Bryant in at quarterback. He's in the shotgun here on fourth and one from the Jackson State 34. There's a snap. And Bryant is going to take off. And he has enough for the first down as he runs out of bounds on the far side. Almost knocked over Vince. First down, Mississippi Valley. Helmet came off on the field. I want to say that was uh, Malik Hamlin. He's going to have to come out for a play. So Hamner is out. But I tell you, the Valley just ran a little zone read. The quarterback just pulled it and kept it that time. Valley picks up the first down on fourth and one. 432 remaining in the third quarter. Jackson State 20, Mississippi Valley 0. But the Delta Devils now with the ball at Jackson State's 32-yard line. Evan back in the ball game for the Delta Devils. Throws deep down the field toward the right side in the end zone, and it is incomplete. Yeah, and we have a flag on the, this on the play too, Coach. This pass from is incomplete. Penalty marker on the field. And like you said, Valley has been a very disciplined team in this ball game until that. Yeah, and this is, I want to say, maybe the fourth penalty, you know, in the whole game. You know, you, let's go back to Alabama a and in the first half. 15 penalties for 109 yards, Coach. Wow. So that penalty against Mississippi Valley is going to push them all the way back near midfield. And I think if Valley gives Vince some time and give him a chance, knowing the athletic director I work for, knowing her, she's She's going to give him time to, to, to build this program and continue to get it going in the right direction. Uh, I'm sure he'll get it done. First down and 17 for the Delta Devils from the Jackson State 47. They can pick up the first down at the JSU 21. Evan, the quarterback in the shotgun, back to throw. Here comes the pressure. Hit as he throws. McElfresh makes the catch. A pickup of about 10 Eden yards, so to it's going to be second down and about 13 now for the Delta Devils. Yeah, they're just running that comeback out there. At some point in time, he's probably going to try to give him a little stop and go, trying to get him to bite on this thing. Valley has the ball at Jackson State's 35-yard line. Evan, the quarterback for the Delta Devils. They have two receivers to the left, two to the right. One back in the backfield with, Mc, uh, with the uh, quarterback, Evan. Under four minutes to go here in the third. Evan back to throw. Fires across the middle. McElfresh almost made that catch with one hand, Coach. Yeah, he's trying to one-hand it, but if he used two hands, Coach would have had a chance. Now, this little young quarterback right here for Mr. Rival is not bad, Coach. That's why I say Vince may have a chance, you know, in the future. This is the ninth play of this drive for Mississippi Valley that started at their own 45-yard line. John Derrick Smith in the backfield with Evan. You have two receivers to the left, two to the right. McElfrish, one of the SWAC's leading receivers this season. Fires across the middle. The catch is made at the 25-yard line. But it's not going to be enough for a first down. He'll be about three this yards shy the of the first down. Yeah, he's going to go for it right here, trying to get something going, trying to keep the shutout from, you know, being done on him. But they're going to go for it on fourth and three. We're going to change quarterbacks again, Coach. Okay, they're going to put this fast quarterback in here, Bryant, who got the first down on, who got the first down on fourth and one a moment ago, as he sprinted out to the right side. If Bryant try to get back outside again, I'm afraid Jackson State probably going to read this thing, Coach. You know, Bryant, um, he's listed as an athlete, not a quarterback. Yeah, he's only 5'9 as well. And he calls a timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. 2.52 to go. Jackson State 20, Mississippi Valley 0. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network.
sunny and 80 degrees in Jackson. No rain in the forecast. It is 4 o'clock. Time and temperature brought to you by Entergy. Here on 4th and 3, Bryant fires towards the end zone. It is complete for the touchdown. Touchdown. A little play action right there, Coach. Play action on the sweep. The safety came down for Jackson State, biting on it, and let the guy just run right by him. A 14-yard touchdown pass from DeJerick Bryant to John Derrick Smith, and Mississippi Valley finally cracks the scoreboard as they trail 20-6, to six, pending the outcome of this point after. Looks like Valley's going to go for two here, Coach. Going for two, Coach. Vince said, what does he have to lose? Everything in the game, Coach. And now they're going to go with the field goal. They're in field goal formation. There's a snap. A little bit high. Ball plays down. The kick is up. And it is good. 2.52 to go in the third. Jackson State 20, Mississippi Valley 7. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. So you haven't washed your lucky socks since that fourth quarter comeback five years ago. At C Spire, we get it. You'll do anything to help your team win. Just like anything we do is inspired by you. We are your biggest fan, lucky socks and all. From business to home to wireless, our inspiration is always you. C Spire, customer inspired. Switch and save up to $500 on our best phones with trade-in. Details at cspire.com. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi partners with our communities to promote living healthy. With the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, we're empowering you to take control of your personal wellness journey and to find the joy of being active at every age and helping you build proud, healthy communities with a heart of hospitality because it's about you, your health, your life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. It's good to be blue. back at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Mississippi Valley will kick it away after that 14-yard touchdown pass. It is fielded at the one. He's up to the 15, and we have a flag coming in now. So, you know, whatever he's doing here, they're going to bring it all the way back as Harper tries to take it across the 25-yard line. Richie Automotive, check them out. Their new Volkswagen, Audi, Jaguars, and Land Rovers. Enjoy a true luxury dealership experience at Richie Automotive and also find a higher quality of pre-owned cars when you visit Richie Automotive, 5320 I-55 North Frontage Road in Jackson. Log on to GoRitchie.com. So, uh, got a holding call right there, Coach. Um, Barnett. Is that your supervisor standing behind you? <laughs> There's no other place. <laughs> nah, coach. You, you to my left and my boss, Dr. Anthony, at home or at the game, enjoying the game, coach. I don't know who it is, coach. Yes. This spot, right? This is a popular spot because last time with Pine Bluff, that's where the young lady stood right there. Yeah. All right, first down and 10 for JSU from its own 14-yard line. Jared Hayes remains in at quarterback. Hayes in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Jordan Johnson. Johnson up the middle, bounces off a tackler and takes it across the 20 and knocked down at the 21. A nice pickup on the play on first down for Jordan Johnson. Yeah, just running, just running a straight lead right there, Coach. Doubling on the nose, full back up on the linebacker, and just running a straight lead out of the split back, out of the... Uh, Shotgun formation. Second down and five now for Jackson State. 2.13 to go here in the third. JSU 20, Mississippi Valley 7. Hayes again in the shotgun for Jackson State. Two receivers to the right. One stretched out wide to the left. Two backs in the backfield. They fake the handoff, throw the screen pass. The catch is made as he takes it across the 25 to about the 28-yard line on the reception for JSU, Kobe Gates, and that's an AARP first down. Yeah, what Coach McCall is doing with Hayes is just managing the game, running the football, not giving him too much, just managing the football game right now. 
Again, that touchdown sponsored by AARP of Mississippi. First down and 10 for Jackson State from its own 30-yard line. Hayes again in the shotgun. Gives it to Jordan Johnson, and he is swarmed in the backfield and loses two yards on the play. Yeah, it looked like he was just trying to run a draw play. And again, when you talk about up front, that's the second time that Pastor Pastor's guy beat him that time and pushed him in the backfield. So that caused the collision in the backfield. They're telling the band to kind of calm it down on second down and 11. JSU from its own 29-yard line, operating from left to right. Under a minute to go here in the third. Hayes in the shotgun. Valley with a four-man front. They give it to Jordan Johnson. Johnson off to the right side. And Johnson on his way. He's across midfield. He's at the 40, 35, and brought down at about the 33-yard line. The ball squirts out, but they're going to say he was down. What a run by Jordan Johnson. Yeah, but Coach, you know, when you, when you look at that, Wallace, that was Wallace's man that came off, and he never saw him, Coach. When you look back at the replay, he never saw Wallace's man. Wallace gave me a bad effort on that one. That was his man that almost caused the fumble. So he Jordan. never looked at him. He didn't even see him. But when you, as a receiver, you can't oh, half, know, half on the backside, Coach. Looked like he made a fumble on that, and Jackson State came out with a break here. But anyway, that's another AARP of Mississippi first down. Jackson State at the Mississippi Valley. 31. Right up the middle of the Tigers go with Quinton Brown. Quinton Brown's been running hard all night long, Coach. That ends the third quarter of play. Jackson State leading 20-7. to seven. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after this on the Tigers Sports Network. Back at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium, we start the fourth quarter of play. Hayes takes the snap from the shotgun. Hayes is going to be brought down, losing a yard back to about the 27-yard line. Yeah, I expect to try to run a quarterback draw right there with Hayes. Hayes is going to have to make his mind up, put that foot in the ground, and get outside. So that goes down as a sack. And you had a flag on Mississippi Valley right here. Now we got a first down. Looks like Hayes is coming out the ball game. Tigers of Jackson State, first and ten. In the ball game now for Jackson State is Jordan Williams. Now he's in at quarterback. He has been switched to a receiver, so he's going to be quarterbacking on this play on first down and ten from the Valley 20-yard line. He pitches it out to Brown. Brown inside the 20. Down to the 15 before he's wrestled down at about uh, the 14 yard line. I think they're going to probably get that guy with Hayes. Hayes. The and when this guy's in, the, when, when this young man is in the game, um, Jordan Williams at quarterback, I expect to just see run, coach. Option of quarterback power, a sweep or something. Jackson State at the Mississippi Valley 15 yard line. They're inside the Steeple Investment Red Zone. 
Jordan Williams, the quarterback. And he's going to take off Williams up the middle, and he is brought down at the 10-yard line, and he has enough for another AARP of Mississippi first down. Or do they mark him down shy of the first down, Coach? Mark them shy, Coach. They just ran quarterback power, but if he picked those legs up, he could have easily walked in the end zone, Coach. Now, he had his coming out party against Mississippi Valley in Itabina. He did. Jackson State's going to take a timeout here, Coach. All right, 13.29 to go. Jackson State calls a timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. Tigers lead it 20 to 7, and they're knocking on the door. We're back after this. <laughs> Safeguarding the money of others as if it were our own. At Stiefel, it's their guiding principle. For more than 125 years, investors like you have trusted Stiefel to help them pursue their financial goals and leave a legacy for future generations. Stiefel, Nicholas & Company Incorporated, member NYSE and SIPC. Stiefel Investment Services since 1890. There's a common misconception that all chicken sandwiches from the South are the same. Q Zaxby's new Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. The Southern Chicken Sandwich will never be the same. Introducing the all-new buttermilk and hand-breaded Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. One has sweet pickles, lettuce, smoky backyard sauce, and a potato bun. The other a perfected classic with lettuce, tomato, and mayo. Order ahead on Zaxby's.com or use our app to skip the wait. Friends, family, flavor. Zaxby's. Third down is short now for Jackson State from the Delta Devils 11-yard line. Jared Hayes back in at quarterback. He's underneath center now for the Tigers. Eye formation behind him and Hayes with the quarterback sneak. And I think he may. Let's see, coach. I don't know if he got it or not. That's where you got to get behind that big offensive line, coach. Okay. He had to get it to the 11. And they are spotting it. Part of the problem is my left guard coach never got off. He went straight to the ground. My, my left tackle tried to come and help. But it starts between guard, center, guard. And my left guard never got off. All right, they are bringing out the chains here. I don't think he got it as we look close. No, he didn't. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be fourth and one. Fourth and maybe one and a half. What do you do here, Coach? Uh, me, I probably would have went for it, but I think Coach Hughes is making the right decision, Coach. Going to kick the field goal Yeah, here. he's making the right decision, but it's homecoming me. I probably would have gone when he took a shot, put it back on my defense. But and he, he has an accurate kicker. Too. Yeah, but he's making the right decision. This will be a 28-yard field goal attempt by Christian Jockman. Salazar will hold. Ronza Anderson, the long snapper. Jockman trying to give JSU a 23-7 lead. As the ball plays down, the kick is up. It is automatic. That kick is, is brought to you by Porter's Insurance, and it gives Jackson State a 23-7 lead. We're back after this on the Tigers Sports Network.
12.56 to go here in the fourth. Jackson State extends the lead to 23-7. Salazar will kick it away, and it will be fielded in the end zone, and Chambers is going to bring it out. He's up to the 10, angles to his left. He's across the 15, and now he is fighting for more yardage as he's brought down across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Jackson State football this season brought to you in part by Kimelon Campbell. She's running for Hines County Circuit Court Judge, Sub-District 2. Kimelon is... Has practiced law for 20 years. She is an assistant district attorney prosecuting murders, armed robberies, and armed carjackings. She is committed to public safety and community development. Kimelon will work diligently to keep our community safe, increase the quality of life in Hines County, and administer justice firmly and fairly. Get out and vote November 6th. 23-7 is our score. Jackson State has led it the entire way. And, Coach, as you see the stats here, you, 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 you kind of puzzle with something. Yeah, I, I do, Coach. Sam, know. man, got him. <laughs> Sam, man. He must be up here with us, Coach. <laughs> On first down, Valley throws underneath. Can't make the catch. Well, we may have a, a late hit on, on, our, on the quarterback here. Um, let's see, Coach. Yeah. All right, that's... Lantre Jones of Carthage, Mississippi. Yeah. Of quarterback late. What, 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 what's mind-boggling now, Coach, when you look at the third down conversions, in the third quarter, Jack State was 6 of 11. At the half, they were 6 of 9. And then when you and I go back and look at the stats you kept, Jack State only got one first down right. in the third quarter. You know, that means Valley kind of tightened up defensively. You know, we don't need that to happen. And then something, you know, they get a little momentum going. 23-7 is our score. Jackson stayed with the lead, but Valley first down and 10 from its own 37. Evan throws along the left side. Chambers makes the catch. You can see what Valley has talent on this team, Coach. They do, Coach. And I think it's just a, a matter of time before Vince really gets it together. Well, what's going to have to happen, Coach? He's going to have to kind of reduce his schedule. You know, you played North Dakota State, Jacksonville State early. Then you play up with Thune-Cookman. And I do understand sometimes you have to play those money games. But winning is all about scheduling as well. All right, first down for the Delta Devils in JSU's territory from the Tigers' 46-yard line. Jeff Evan, the quarterback. He's back in the shotgun, takes a snap, throws along the left sideline. Chambers makes the catch, and he is gobbled up on that play. Yeah. After a pickup of maybe two yards. Yeah, Valley's just trying to take what they give, you know, the defense gives them right now. Second and seven. Give Valley three yards on that play. Second down and seven. Two receivers to the right, two to the left for Mississippi Valley. Evan again takes a snap from the shotgun, and he is sacked. Sacked back at the 45-yard line, a loss of two yards. Jackson State defense lined up in that 3-2, and they brought both linebackers. You know, football terminology, 3-2 double fire, but... You know, they brought those back, so they brought a six-man pressure. Three-two double five. That sounds like a rap, coach. Yeah, three-two double five, A gap and B gap, coach. Just a little terminology. <laughs> I don't want to get too technical, coach. You know what I mean? Third you down. Know, <laughs> uh, you know, they may say I'm, I'm too technical as a football coach. You know, but if it's in you, it's in you, coach. It's in you, Coach. That's just like you. Uh, this is what you do best. Is you a born coach, Coach. Thank Third you, down coach. and nine for Mississippi Valley. Sonny is over there on the uh, Valley sideline right now. I don't think the Delta Devil is here this year. Nah. Sonny come over there to get something. He wouldn't be over there if he was. All right. You got um, the backup quarterback back in the game for Mississippi Valley. Bryant, and he is brought down. He calls his own number. He's going to bring a fourth down and about five. Yeah, Charles Anderson. I'm sorry, fourth and nine because he was back at the original line of scrimmage. No game. Charles, An Charles Anderson, I'm sorry, went and just made the play. Him and Malik Hamner here, and they're going to go for it. 10.09 to go here in the fourth. Valley going for it on fourth down and nine. Evan back to throw, and the catch is made. And third, another fourth down conversion for the Delta Devils from the Jackson State 32. You know, here, and here's what a, a, a Valley does. They just run every route that they run. 
looks like a deep threat route. You know, I remember when Jimmy was in Jacksonville, Jimmy Smith, and I sat down at his house, and, you know, he said, and I asked him, how did, how did you do the things that you did as a receiver? He said, I made every route look like I was going deep on Wow. First down and 10, Mississippi Valley at the Jackson State, 32. Evan throws. It is incomplete. He was looking for Mikel first around the 20-yard line, but C.J. Holmes back defending for the Tigers. And, and, and also, Kent, uh, Keontre Hampton in his face. Coach, it's hard to throw the football on when you're on your, on your big numbers, what they call your back, Coach. <laughs> it's hard to throw it, Coach. Second down and 10 for Mississippi Valley from the Jackson State 32. Jackson State football this season brought to you in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield, Richard Swartz and Associates, as well as Entergy and Zaxby's. On second and 10, Evan steps up in the pocket, hit as he throws, he throws it out of bounds, incomplete. Yeah, I don't know who he was trying to throw that with to. Coach. His receiver was all the way over there by the Amalams. The, uh, the Amalams over there, Coach. They blocked all the way. God, the people kill Coach. You can't get blocked no further than the Amalams over there, Coach. I mean... Look at C.J. Holmes over there at the top. He drove him all the way out. That's Arrington took him all the way to the Amalam, Coach. I now, thought they were going to put that must be a new kind of vehicle, yeah. the Amalam. That's, that's the Amalam. Amalam. Who, who do they put in the Amalam? <laughs> I was waiting on you to correct me. <laughs> you know what? He threw it again to the Amalam. He must think the Amalam is a new <laughs> Hey, you know where I, where I come from is the Amalam, coat, the Amalams. I was wondering what vehicle I was looking for, the Amalam. So, all right, so it's fourth down and 10. Will they go for it here, coach? He has to go for it, coach. He doesn't have a choice. 9.20 to go in the fourth quarter. Jackson State 23, Mississippi Valley 7. We'll give you some scores from around the league in just a moment. But right now, Jackson State in full command of this one. Leading Valley 23 to 7. It's fourth down and 10 for the Delta Devils from the JSU 32. Here comes the pressure, throws across the middle. It is incomplete. And Valley turns it over on downs. Good job defensively right there. I mean, they just tried to throw the post to the inside. Jackson State defense was just all over that play. Great job. In other games, across the SWAC, taking a look at our Hope Credit Union SWAC scoreboard update. Alcorn doing Jackson State a favor as they lead Alabama A&M in the third, 26 to 18. Alabama A&M and South, I'm, I'm sorry, Alabama State and South Alabama just underway. Southern Prairie View, Grambling, Texas Southern, a little bit later tonight. That is your Hope Credit Union SWAC scoreboard update. Love to see the offense take the ball and just drive it downfield and punch it in. If you could go down and punch it in, I think you can kind of seal the deal. Jackson State, first and 10 from its own 32. He had an offensive lineman yeah. move for JSU. He saw some of that moving against with Valley, and um, big old Donnell Pastor just panicked a little bit. A lot, like of, lot of movement, there, Coach. A lot of movement. But the one good thing I did see, Coach, he knew which direction he was going. <laughs> You know, sometimes you see those guys go the wrong way. All right, see if we can check in with Spencer McClinty. Check in with Spencer. All right, still having Coach trouble Spen. with that. Hayes going deep downfield. It is incomplete. No flags on the play. He was looking for Kenny Young, the sophomore out of Belleville, Illinois. But it was a little bit over his head. Yeah, a little bit over his head. Coach, they just tried to throw a post route one-on-one. -on -one. Also, the quarterback has to hit the ankle. The defensive back was on his back shoulder. Ball should have been thrown inside on a goal post throw up and down. All right, second down at 15 now for Jackson State. The ball resting at the JSU 26-yard line. Hayes remains in at quarterback. We have not seen... Derek Ponder in this game at all. They swing it out to Jordan Johnson. He makes the catch, but loses more yards on that play. Yeah, here's what Jackson State offensively doesn't need to sputter. 
You know, you don't need to give Valley any false hope. You know, continue to run the football. Don't get away from your run game. Stick to the game plan. We still need to score points right here. All right, he lost four yards on that play, bringing up third down and 15. Jackson State with it at its own 22. They can pick up the first down at the 42. Your brother is at ramp eight. Where are you? Here's Jared Hayes back in the shotgun on third and long, and he is sacked. Great pressure by the Delta Devils as they get the sack on that sack for Mississippi Valley. That was yeah, Adam yeah. Hamilton. Yeah, Mississippi Valley just had an all-out blitz right there. We were in position to make the play, but it was just all-out blitz. All right. Jockman is on to punt it away for Jackson State. Booker Chambers standing back at his 30-yard line as Jockman will punt it from the three. Jackson State 23, Mississippi Valley 7. We've had a lot of visitors here at homecoming, but the one that's stayed in here today is the Sandman. Jockman gets it away. It's a low kick, and it's going to take a good bounce as Chambers picks it up at the 30, and C.J. Holmes drags him down at the 31-yard line. We'll take a break. Jackson State leading 23-7. This is the Tiger Sports Network. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi partners with businesses across the state to help them be places where people are encouraged to make healthy choices. With the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, we support you in the places you work every day. Because it's about you. Your health, your life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy, live blue. It's good to be blue. Circuits deliver power by making connections. At Entergy, we believe that works for people, too. The next generation is our connection to the future. So every year, Entergy invests millions of dollars in education to teach skills for better jobs, to build a brighter path. To us, making connections means more than electricity. It means fulfilling promise. And together, we power life. Energy. On first and 10, Evan throws deep down the field. The pass is incomplete. Broken up by the JSU secondary on a good defensive effort to coach. It was, Coach. Great defensive effort right there. Well thrown ball, but the def the defender had the better edge on the play right there. Great job. 727 to go in this game. The Sandman is here. But why he won't leave, Coach? <laughs> what Second. is the problem? <laughs> <laughs> want to say hello to all the fans tailgating, listening to the game this afternoon. I'd like to say hello to my family on Alta Vista, Coach, who's sitting out front listening to the game, Coach. In Alta Vista? Alta Vista. Louisiana? No, right here on Jackson, Mississippi, Alta Vista. Street. Oh, on Alta Vista Street in Jackson? Yeah, Coach. I didn't know you had family on Alta yeah, Vista. Yeah, Coach. Mr. Nicholas Warren. See, I got me some. My same man is woke me up there, Coach. <laughs> Third down. And 15 for Mississippi Valley. Evan throws across the middle. The catch is made by Booker Chambers. And it's a first down for the Delta Devils. Coach, one thing I can say, Mississippi Valley's not giving up, Coach. They're still fighting. They're not giving up. Jackson State is going to have to pick it back up defensively because last week, you know, we gave up 518 yards of offense right before the half. I mean, at halftime, we had already given up. Wow, that's a nice catch along the sideline by Mississippi Valley. Yeah, I see. The Delta Devils trailing 23 to 7, 701 to go. Third quarter score from Huntsville, Alabama AM 18, Alcorn 32. Second down and 10 for Mississippi Valley. Evan rolls out, throws to Booker Chambers, who makes the catch. He spins out of a tackle. He's in the Jackson State territory, down to the 40-yard line. 
I see right here again, Coach. <clears throat> We're just going to have to continue to play good defense. Mississippi Valley, you know, their, their, their attitude, their effort is not going away. They're still trying to score points. 6.39 to go. Jackson State leading Valley 23-7. to It is first and 10, the Delta Devils at the JSU 41-yard line. The officials telling the Jackson State band to cut it out. And I believe that's going to be the last one right here. Valley first and 10 from the JSU 41-yard line. Evan back to throw. Has time, throwing deep down the field. This may be intercepted, and it is. Picked off at the 5. He's at the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. A flag is down in the backfield. He takes it across midfield, still running, and dropped down at the 40-yard line. Nice interception on the play by Jackson State's Rashad Jenkins. I'm, I'm worried about what this flag is, Coach. On the field. He just went deep down the field and he had um, two I don't know if it's defenders back yeah. there. And he was just not able. But he's an offensive pass interference. Wow. Sideline interference. What is that, coach? And they'll get the, that and ball is going to come all the way back, coach. And that's going to nullify that interception by Tony Alex. So let's check in with Spencer McClinty. Spin, what you got? Yeah, Rob, that, they call it the sideline interference. I believe that's because there's like a million people down here on the sideline. On Jackson State side, there are so many people uh, near the football team on the other side. And most of the game, there have been people actually in the way of the referees as they've tried to run up and down the sideline. So I don't know if, if uh, that was the was the situation on this particular time, but but I'm not surprised by the sideline interference call. Okay, so Jackson State will keep the ball. Yes. Okay, so, you know, who cares? So JSU keeps the football on first down and 10. Hayes fires. Man is open at midfield. The catch is made at the 25-yard line. Making a catch now, for Jackson State, that's Kenny Young. Now I'll tell you, that's the same play that he just ran. I saw Coach McCall on the jump on the tron right here talking to him, letting him know that the defensive back is on the outside shoulder. You have to drive that football in there, and that's what Hayes came back and did. Those are the kind of guys that you like to coach, guys that are going to listen to you and be coachable. First and 10, Jackson State from the Mississippi Valley 28-yard line. Hayes hands it off to Jordan Johnson. Johnson. Tough going there as he picks up a yard to about the 28 of Mississippi Valley. Jordan Johnson, Just running lead the right there from the shotgun. Pistol formation. Running lead off that right side. That last play was just an individual post route. 5.23 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jackson State with a comfortable 23-7 lead over Mississippi Valley. And the Tigers are driving now. Second and eight. Valley showing blitz, and here they come, and they get Jarrett for a loss of about seven yards. Yeah, there's no flag. I thought our right tackle, right guard moved a little bit, uh, but no flag on that. Employees are Tigers, as well as former Tigers and Tiger fans. 437 and counting, third down and long for Jackson supporter. State, but they have the ball at Valley's 33-yard line. Hayes back in the shotgun. Hayes with time, now steps up in the pocket, rolls to his left, buying time, throws. It is almost intercepted, and it may have been picked off at the 17, and it is. Yeah. So Jackson State with an interception, Valley with an interception. Yeah, he get it right back. Flushed out of the pocket, scrambling to your left, throwing back across your body a little bit, and that normally happens when you throw back across your body, Coach. All right, we'll take a timeout. Jackson State leading 23-7 with 4.17 to go. We're back after this.
406 to go. Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 23 to 7. Now tomorrow on the campus of Jackson State, the men and women's basketball team will be introduced at 5 o'clock at the Athletics and Assembly Center. So coming out to see the JSU men and women basketball team. Jackson State is putting a lot of pressure on this quarterback now, Coach. And down he goes yeah. as soon as you say that. And now it looks like it was a fumble, but the officials say that he was down to a sack on that play. Malik Hamner on that sack. I'm sorry, Brian Mitchell. He's taking uh, this quarterback a long time to get up. Finally, he comes up. Training staff comes out for Valley, but Evan is up on his feet. But he is shaking up, Coach. He yeah. was hit hard, man. 3.40 to go. Jackson State 23, Valley 7. I don't know what that say. No idea. <laughs> fourth down now for Mississippi Valley, and they're going to punt it away as it, it is fourth down from their own 12-yard line. They'll be punting from their own end zone. A high kick is a short kick, and it will roll dead at midfield. 3-12 to go. Jackson State looking at his second straight win of the season. We're back after this on the Tigers Sports Network. There's a common misconception that all chicken sandwiches from the south are the same. Q Saxby's new Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. The Southern Chicken Sandwich will never be the same. Introducing the all-new buttermilk and hand-breaded Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. One has sweet pickles, lettuce, smoky backyard sauce, and a potato bun. The other a perfected classic with lettuce, tomato, and mayo. Order ahead on Zaxby's.com or use our app to skip the wait. Friends, family, flavor. Zaxby's. I was just devastated. But it happened so fast. And I was literally in shock. I really didn't know what to do. A friend of mine had used Richard once before. If you need to call somebody, make sure you call Richard Swartz because they're going to be on their job. Don't hesitate. Call Richard Swartz. I'm attorney Richard Schwartz. I'll work just as hard for you. I won't settle for $1 less than you deserve. Call 601-9 and all eight. Free background information is available upon request. Richard Swartz and Associates. One call. That's all. Following that punt by Mississippi Valley, Jackson State first down and 10 from the Delta Devils 49-yard line on first down. Valley's defense stops Jackson State for a loss of one back to the 49 of JSU. Great job by Jackson State defense just trying to seal this game. Trying to seal this game, Coach. Coach, I'll tell you this. Since the departure of Hal Mummy, Jackson State has looked impressive with two wins in a row. They have, Coach. And again, you know, I, I, not sounding selfish or anything, but sometimes you have to surround yourself with people that understand the winning tradition that Jackson State has, not taking anything away from Coach Mummy's career. But in order for Jackson State to get back on the right track, Coach, you know, with this football team, you're going to have to, you know, have the people in the right places to, and Coach McCall is doing a good job. Second down and about 13 now for Jackson State. Ball just shy of midfield. JSU has led the entire way. They lead it 23 to 7 over Mississippi Valley. 3.02 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jackson State stays at home next week to play University of North Alabama. Jordan Johnson taking it off the right tackle, and he picks up about five yards, bringing up about third down and maybe seven there, Coach. Yeah, Vince is trying to use his timeouts. This is his last one here. It should be his last. Yeah, last time out. Okay. So, so we, we can get a first down. All right. We'll take a break after this on the Tiger Sports Network.
29 to go on third down. And five. Jordan Johnson picks up maybe three yards. Going to bring up fourth down. And can we have another timeout? No, Coach, Coach is going to let the clock run down. He'll probably call a timeout with one second on the plate clock, 25 second clock. But let me say this real quick, Coach Wallace, the receiver, number 10, if he blocks his man, Jordan can pick up the first down. All you right. know, let's check in with Spencer McClinton. Rob, I think, and I was just thinking about this as Coach was talking, this is, a, as he said, a good showing for the Jackson State football team. The offense looks really good. The defense looked really good. Somehow, though, and I don't want to sound like a, a what is it, Debbie Downer, but I, I expected them to look a little better. Uh, wanted to see a little bit more, but I'm glad that the Jesu football team looked as good as they did. The offense put up a good amount of points, and hopefully we can carry this forward and, and take it into the rest of the season. All right, fourth down now for Jackson State. Fourth and about three. Fourth and three for the Tigers. Two minutes exactly remaining in the ball game. Jockman is on to punt it away for JSU. We have a new return man back for Mississippi Valley. He's going to signal for the fair catch. It goes out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Back deep for Valley on that uh, catch was Javarius Moore, the freshman from Newton, Mississippi. Nice punt right there, Coach. You always want to find your guy that can pin you inside the 10-yard line and make them have to drive the length of the field. Jackson State football brought to you in part by Richie Automotive. Check out their new Volkswagen, Audi, Jaguar, Land Rovers. Enjoy a true luxury dealership experience at Richie Automotive and also find a higher quality of pre-owned cars when you visit Richie Automotive, 5320 I-55 North, Frontage Road, Jackson. Log on to GoRitchie.com. A minute 53 to play here in the fourth quarter. Jackson State leading Mississippi Valley 23 to 7. Valley first and 10 from its own 10 yard line. That was a pass out to the outside. It's complete for a pickup of five yards for the Delta Devils. Just throwing a little quick out. They're taking what Jackson State gives them. Jackson State is doing a good job of keeping everything else in front of them. Nobody getting up, up you know, up vertically on them. Second and five for the Delta Devils, 148 to go. Jackson State should get its second straight victory. I say should because you still got almost two minutes to go. They'll get it, Coach. They'll get it. <clears throat> and they played well enough today they to did. get this win. They did. So Jackson State rolling off two wins in a row. Next up, North Alabama right here in uh, Memorial Stadium. So that's going to be a little bit tougher competition for JSU. It will be, Coach. Uh, North Alabama, last time I checked, was up on Alabama State. North Alabama's playing Alabama State? So, no, 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 so no, no, no. Alabama State playing North Alabama? Uh, That's I'm, 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> me and you, <laughs> it's the same, man, Coach. <laughs> That was a huge hit. Yeah, it was. Good night. That was a huge hit. But it wasn't targeting, Coach, and that's what they're trying to call. He hit was on the left side. He used his right shoulder pad. Oh, that was that's not that's targeting. Call. Oh, come on, man. You got Maybe. to tackle. Okay. Watch the, watch the shoulder, Coach. Right shoulder. That's uh, Right shoulder, Coach. Well, Coach, he did look like his helmet went into his chest. Yeah. Initially, let's see. Ah, uh, yeah. They're going to call it every time. Yeah. They're going to call you, that you, every you, time. You know, last night, my, my big All-American committed to LSU got thrown out for targeting. Is Office that right? Lineman, coach. So now this is going to – that was a big hit, though. Yeah. Patrick Wheelock making the tackle for Jackson State. He was called for targeting. They're going to look at it. They always look at these targeting calls. And we're going to take a break and come back with a minute 38 to go with the official call. We're back after this. I was just devastated. But it happened so fast. And I was literally in shock. I really didn't know what to do. A friend of mine had used Richard once before. If you need to call somebody, make sure you call Richard Swartz because they're gonna be on their job. Don't hesitate, call Richard Swartz. 
I'm attorney Richard Schwartz. I'll work just as hard for you. I won't settle for $1 less than you deserve. Call 601-9 and all eight. Free background information is available upon request. Richard Schwartz and Associates, one call, that's all. JSU welcomes Porter's Insurance as a proud sponsor of JSU Athletics. For all of your insurance needs, turn to a friend indeed. Porter's Insurance, located at 1020 University Boulevard, formerly known as Terry Road, offers protection coverage for all of your needs. Porter's has affordable comprehensive coverage for your home, car, life, health, and accident and commercial business needs. Learn more about Porter's Insurance at portersinsurance.com. Porter's Insurance and JSU, partners in our community. So after further review, Jackson State was ruled to the targeting did not um, stand as they reversed that targeting call. And Coach, you called it. That was not targeting at all. Yeah, he, he, he led in with his shoulder. Helmer was on the left side. Shoulder pad was on the right side. And good job. A minute, five to go and counting. Jackson State looking to wrap this one up to move to three and two on the season. And two and one in conference play. And there's another sack of Evan. He gets up and tries to run out of it, but it's best that you stay down, son. 46 seconds to go. Charles Anderson credited with that sack. Coming up after the ball game, we'll hear from Jackson State head football coach Tony Hughes in his second straight win for the Tigers. Jackson State will extend their winning streak over Valley with a series winning to 57 wins, six losses, and two ties. How do you dominate a team like that over the years, Coach? Coach, it's just been a tradition that Jackson State has had and you know, the execution of the coaches that they've had in the past. I mean, you go all the way back to Coach Gordon and the Common G's and the rest of Coach Big Daddy and Coach Hughes. Bob Hill. Third down and long for the Delta Devils with 26 seconds to go. That pass is batted down by C.J. Holmes. You want to bring up fourth down with 21 seconds left. CJ's been playing a good ball game. Oh, absolutely. Last two weeks, he's had two good ball games. Coming up after the ball game, we'll have our offensive and defensive players of the game. Also, fans, be reminded the Tigers return back here at the bet next Saturday, 2 p.m. kickoff. The 21 seconds to go Alabama. in the fourth quarter. Jackson State leading this game 23 to 7 over Mississippi Valley. Fourth down, Evan is in trouble as he rolls to his left, and he is sacked back at the 40-yard line, and that will just about do it. But Brian we have an Mitchell. injured player on the play after that sack for Jackson State. And Brian Mitchell is the one that made the sack and the one that is injured as well. Brian Mitchell chased him down, made the tackle, and was injured. May have had the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Yeah. Jackson State just needs to take a knee on him, and it's over, Coach. All right, so Jackson State will improve to three and two on the season, two and one in the swag. So Jackson State remains in the hunt as Alcorn is defeating Alabama A&M. That's the team that beat Jackson State. So JSU looking really good right now, Coach. Yes, they are, Coach. 11 seconds left to go. Jackson State 23. Mississippi Valley 7, and they take a knee, and that will do it. Jackson State wins 23-7 over Mississippi Valley. They never trailed. And there you have it, homecoming 2018. And we're going to send it down to Spencer score. McClinty as he tries to get Coach Hughes after he shakes hands with the opposing coach of Mississippi Valley. I'm sorry, we uh, just simply could not hear Coach Hughes. Thank you, Spencer, but thank you, Coach Hughes. Jackson State defeats Valley 23-7. We're going to take a break and come back after this on the Tiger Sports Network.
back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Jackson State defeats Mississippi Valley 23-7. Jackson State wins his second game in a row, and uh, they continue their dominating streak over Mississippi Valley. That makes it 57 wins to six losses and two ties over the Delta Devils. Coach, and JSU led from start to finish in this game. Is it something that you expected, something you'd like to see? Well, I did expect Jackson State to come out and play well. I thought offensively we did a good job. You know, it was a little bit of concern when you give up 518 yards of of, def of offense to uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff. But, again, Jack State controlled the game. They won the special team battle again. So, you know, it was what we expected. Who did uh, who impressed you in this game? Um, uh, Hayes played well in the ball game. Jared Johnson ran well. The running backs did run well. Defense played lights out again for JSU. They did. Jordan Johnson did a great job running the football. Um, Hayes did well. I like the way Coach McCall managed the game with him. Didn't give him too much. Ran the football. Took a lot of the decision makers away and just had him read one one person, you know, or two people, and he, he made great decisions with the football. And you know what, Coach? Uh, next week, Jackson State trying to keep that winning streak alive as they play a team outside of the SWAC, North Alabama. This is a schedule that wasn't made by uh, Ashley Robinson. It was it was made before he got here. I don't think Ashley really likes this game, uh, a non-conference team in the middle of the SWAC season. What can we expect from North Alabama? Well, North Alabama is going to be very physical, Coach. Um, you know, I've had some battles with North Alabama in the past, and they're going to be very physical and well coached. I agree with you with that. Um, I know Ashley does not like those games like this in the middle of, of the season. You'd rather have maybe you'd rather have an opening than to go out and risk someone getting hurt and you're getting ready for a championship run. All right, we just received final stats here. <laughs> Jackson State with 206 yards rushing, Valley with negative 23. Yeah, they, they got to go home and get some work done, Coach. And if you cannot run the football, you cannot be successful. Um, you look at total offense, Jackson State, 65 possessions, 335 yards offense. We have not seen that in two years, Coach. We certainly have not. Jordan Johnson with 134 yards rushing in this ball game. So this is Jackson State's uh, easily their best offensive output this season. Correct. And, and somebody's still saying, you know, third down conversion. Wow. That's not correct, Coach. Uh, Jackson State did much better than that on third down conversions. Well, I don't know there, Coach. I'm looking at the <laughs> stats, and there was a lot of three and outs for Jackson State. They only got one first down in the second half. And that was on a penalty. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But well, they we are having we fun. Got, yeah, they have, we, we have to correct that because when we get to the Alcorns and we get to the Alabama States, we're going to have to get those first downs, you know, to keep our offense on the field and, and stay productive. Our red zone scoring, they were four for four. So that's a positive as well. And the big thing is 18 first downs. Wow, 18 first downs for Jackson State. Yeah. And the Tigers defeat Mississippi Valley 23 to 7. All right, that's going to wrap it up for a very successful homecoming here on JSU TV. So you haven't washed your lucky socks since that fourth quarter comeback five years ago. Oh. At Seaspire, we get it. You'll do anything to help your team win, just like anything we do is inspired by you. We are your biggest fan, lucky socks and all. From business to home to wireless, our inspiration is always you. Seaspire, customer inspired. Switch and save up to $500 on our best phones with trade-in. Details at cspire.com. Circuits deliver power by making connections. At Entergy, we believe that works for people, too. The next generation is our connection to the future. So every year, Entergy invests millions of dollars in education to teach skills for better jobs, to build a brighter path. To us, making connections means more than electricity. It means fulfilling promise. And together... We power life. Energy. <laughs> Boy, I it's, a, it's a happy homecoming yeah. as Jackson State defeats Mississippi Valley. And, Coach, when you look at the offensive player of the game, who do you look at? Coach, I, I, you know, Jordan Johnson, Coach. I mean, he played well. Uh, 134 yards rushing. He had 140, but the penalties uh, caused him to lose those other yards. 
but he, he, he did a great job. Uh, and, and that whole running back core, I'm impressed with the whole running back core, Coach. So Jordan Johnson is our offensive player of the game. When we come back, we'll take a look at the defensive player of the game. This is the Tiger Sports Network. We're back at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. A victory. Happy, victorious homecoming for Jackson State. The Tigers defeat Mississippi Valley 23-7. How important of a win was this, Coach? Great win, Coach. You know, <clears throat> and it still puts you in, 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 in the hunt, Coach. And, and that's what the team needed, especially for homecoming. Everybody comes to homecoming. So everybody had a chance to see how, how well Jackson State has improved without Hal Mundy. All right, coach. When you look at <laughs> what, coach? when you look at the, um, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what took that so long, but anyway, <laughs> but, um, we're looking at the defense. Keontre Hampton with four tackles. He led the team with four tackles. Uh, Charles Anderson with three. C.J. Holmes two tackles. He had several breakups in the ball game. When you look at the defensive player of the game, who do you get? Who do you give it to, Coach? Coach, I'm, I'm stuck in between Hamilton, I mean Hampton and Holmes, because as much as Valley likes to throw the football, Holmes was all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm going to have to split that one between the two. Can I do that? Absolutely, Coach. That's what I want. Coach, you can make the rules here. <laughs> you certainly can. All right. When we come back, we'll have more of the. JSU post game show after this on the Tiger Sports Network. Hey, Tiger fans, today is your day to connect with AARP. They're here in our state working hard to make it an even better place to live, work, and play for people of all ages. So check out their Fraud Watch workshops or prepare to care classes for caregivers and help AARP push for the issues that matter to you and your family. Or just connect with them at exciting local events and volunteer opportunities. Let's take on today and every day, Tiger fans. Learn more at aarp.org ms. There's a common misconception that all chicken sandwiches from the South are the same. Q Zaxby's new Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. The Southern Chicken Sandwich will never be the same. Introducing the all-new buttermilk and hand-breaded Southern Sweet and Smoky and Southern TLC chicken sandwiches. One has sweet pickles, lettuce, smoky backyard sauce, and a potato bun. The other a perfected classic with lettuce, tomato, and mayo. Order ahead on Zaxby's.com or use our app to skip the wait. Friends, family, flavor. Zaxby's. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> That's all we need, folks. Welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Having a good time here on Cumming as we wrap up uh, this broadcast. Jackson State winning over Mississippi Valley 23 to 7. I think they took the score down too quick there, Coach. Yeah, Everybody coach. else leading the score up all night. Okay, we got it up on that side. But uh, a happy homecoming, Jackson State. And they lost only one game here at Memorial Stadium. It was that game against Alabama A&M. But JSU still in the hunt for the SWAC uh, East Crown as Alcorn is uh, well on its way to defeating Alabama A&M. And again, North Alabama next week. You're liking the play of Jared Hayes each and every game, Coach? He's getting better, Coach, as long as Coach McCall can, you know, just, just make sure they're doing things that he can do 
Um, the decision making is getting better. You know, he just has to c continue to work week in and week out. So hopefully we'll continue to get better. All right, we'll take another break and come back and wrap things up. Jackson State, your winner, 23-7 over Mississippi Valley. We're back after this. Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're going to take a listen to some of those scores by Jackson State. They started with a Romello Shoemake eight yard pass from Jared Hayes. Jackson State at the Delta Devils eight yard line. 6.23 to go here in the first quarter. No score, but JSU on the move. Hayes in the shotgun. He has two backs in the backfield with him. Takes the snap. Hayes looking, has time, throws in the end zone. Touchdown, Jackson State. That was Romello Shoemakes, eight-yard touchdown pass. Uh, reception from Jared Hayes. That made it seven to nothing. Jackson State extended the leads, extended the lead to 14-0 when Jared Hayes took it in from the one. One. Now are they gonna run this play or I don't because think the first it quarter end, is over. It can't end on a penalty though. Okay. All right, first and goal for Jackson State. Hayes underneath center going with the quarterback sneak. They push him in. And they're going to say no signal yet. Touchdown. All right, that gave JSU a 14-0 lead in the first quarter. The second quarter was filled with field goals. JSU with two field goals, starting with a 34-yarder from Christian Jockman. Let me shake his hand. Oh, not okay. You didn't see that. Okay. This will be a 33-yard attempt from the right hash mark. There's a snap. Ball placed down. The kick is up, and it is good. That made the score 17 to nothing, Jackson State. The Tigers extended that lead to 20 to nothing when Jockman connected on a 47-yard field goal. Hash mark, there's a snap, all placed down, the kick is up, and it is good. And Jackson State closed out the scoring when Christian Jockman connected on a 28-yard field goal with about 4.45 to go in the fourth quarter. A field goal attempt by Christian Jockman. Salazar will hold. Ronza Anderson, the long snapper. Jockman trying to give JSU a 23-7 lead. There's the ball placed down, the kick is up. It is automatic. All right, and Christian Jockman with three field goals in the game, Coach. He could have qualified for our offensive player of the game as well. He could have, Coach. You're absolutely correct. All right, three field goals, 34-yarder, 47-yarder, and 28-yarder. And Jackson State defeats Mississippi Valley 23-7. to Any closing remarks, Coach? When we come back, we'll have that for you after this on the Tiger Sports Network. I was just devastated, but it happened so fast. And I was literally in shock. I really didn't know what to do. A friend of mine had used Richard once before. If you need to call somebody, make sure you call Richard Swartz because they're gonna be on their job. Don't hesitate, call Richard Swartz. I'm attorney Richard Schwartz. I'll work just as hard for you. I won't settle for $1 less than you deserve. Call 601-9 and all eight. Free background information is available upon request. Richard Swartz and Associates, one call, that's all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi partners with businesses across the state to help them be places where people are encouraged to make healthy choices. With the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, we support you in the places you work every day. Because it's about you, your health, your life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy, live blue. It's good to be blue. All right, Jackson State, you win a coach. Any closing remarks you'd like to make? 
Uh, Coach, that's, you know, I'm sure they'll go back and prepare and get ready for next week and um, come back and, and get another victory, and we can keep keep rolling from there. All right. You think this train can keep on rolling, Coach? Ain't no stopping us now, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the move. All right. So Jackson State football this season, brought to you in part by all of our great sponsors here at JSU, Richard Schwartz and Associates, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Energy, Zaxby's, Hope Credit Union, C Spire, AARP of Mississippi, Borders Insurance, Stephen Investments, Team Logic IT, Watkins Auto Sales, McCollum Physical Therapy, and Bolden Auto Shop. For Jackson State President, Dr. William Bynum, for JSU Chair of the Department of Journalism and Media Studies, Dr. Lane Hayes Anthony, for our General Manager, Keith Collins, I'm Rob Jay, along with Daryl Asbury, Sam Brown. Spencer McClenty and the rest of the crew. We're saying so long from Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Again, our final score, Jackson State 23, Mississippi Valley 7. We'll see you back next week when JSU hosts South Alabama. So long, everybody.